Welcome everybody to the H3 Podcast Live. Today's episode is sponsored by MeUndies, Hymns, and Twitch sub subscribers just like you. You can subscribe for free by connecting your Prime and mm-hmm. Twitch account. Thanks to Amazon. We both have MeUndies on right now. Are you no, serious? No <laughs> lie. No way. Let's see. Yeah, I need proof. Dig Wait. it. Dig in deep. Oh my god. Mine, are, mine are just straight gray. Wow. Look at these guys. That's are, crazy. If you need, mine if, are skulls. If you don't, if you need more That's of an endorsement than that, badass. I don't know. They're the greatest. Mine are dirty. Can I put them away now? Mine, please. <laughs> yes. the, hold on. The mine, ones you got on right now, or you mean the pair that you the enjoy? The one that I would be loved to be wearing right now are in the wash. <laughs> the, what, it, based on what? The pattern? Like you have a, a certain pattern that you like? I like the donut and milk one, or the not donut and milk. It's cereal and milk. The yeah. Oh yeah, that's I, a great one. There might be. A I donut love cereal. One. I don't have <laughs> that. Maybe They're always releasing new, <laughs> new designs. <laughs> What's What's coupon this code ad? would I use yeah. in order to yeah. get those? All right, they don't pay us enough, guys. Pay us <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were asking uh, what makes an underpants dirty. I'll just, uh, <laughs> well, did, did it create no, a pattern? Him. Yeah. I didn't ask because sometimes it does create a pattern. <laughs> Starts with the smell, <laughs> and they might work back from that. There's many criteria. Yeah. Um, anyway, next week's guest is the prolific Shane Dawson. Please post your questions for him on the subreddit. Those are very helpful. I just want to say I love you guys when you go there and yep. share your opinions. It's really helpful. So thank you to everyone who participates there. But today's guest, <laughs> obviously, you've guessed because there's been banter already. I am very hyped and pleased to introduce these, the great and amazing Rhett and Link, who I have to say are a huge inspiration of why I think we became YouTubers to begin with, was watching your guys' stuff. Really? Multi-talent, absolutely. <laughs> um, I, I understand that I wasn't supposed to talk earlier about the <laughs> underwear, so now I don't know if I can talk now. You can you're talk. good, you're good. When yeah. you throw out a big compliment. The, the, ga- the gate is open. Yeah, the gate is I open. I think you're, just supposed to, you're supposed to smile gently. Oh, okay, I just smile. I'm sorry. Continue. I was going to compliment you guys more. <laughs> right, because if the compliments are still coming. Yeah, if you're not done. I'm going to be passive. Done. Keep going. Going. Keep going. Keep okay, keep going. Sorry. I was going to say the multi-talented. Song and dance men, the triple threat. <laughs> have you guys ever been called the triple threat? You must have. Uh, well, there's two of us. The double. So you're the, you're the we each have one and a half. Or well, when we What's had our, our the third member of our trio who was um, unfortunately wait the tr- mauled. Wait. Triple means a three man act. I thought it meant like the song. Yeah, the it, dance. It, it, you're, it you're, you're, you're right. right. Oh, okay. I was, I just, I I was trying to, to extend his joke. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> you're the triple threat, man. Maybe by extending it, you it would land. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I was trying to save you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, anyway, good evening. God bless. Triple. Gosh, the, gosh yeah. bless. We don't really dance. Well, well, you know we what? Do. I guess we do. I they have dance. I've that. seen. I've seen. If you guys put your mind to yeah. it, you would be straight up dancing in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> I could see you with an umbrella, tap dancing your way. I'm telling you, the triple okay. threat. Challenge accepted. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's 7 p.m. This is not our usual time. Oh. And I can imagine it's been a long day for you guys. Your mm-hmm. schedule must be insane. How was your day? <laughs> we were just talking about this on the way over here. Yeah, it was a, it was a long day. Thursday is our, our uh, work late night, so thanks for accommodating us. Of uh, course, to, to, I mean, yeah. to make this happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we typically record our own podcast in the in the in the late night, mm. but instead, we're we're on this one, so more people oh are going to listen. But the microphones are very similar, so we feel very at home. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for making. It's this been sacrifice. a long day, though. <laughs> so tell me about your day. What did you guys do today? Uh, well, right now, Monday through Thursday, we're we're shooting GMM. So because there's four. Videos coming out a day now. I thought it was three. It's, even it's three. More, it's it was even three on yeah. Good Mythical Morning, and then there's one Good Mythical More. The extra. Yeah, the extra. Um, the and yeah. So there's two episodes on Monday, one episode on Tuesday, one episode on Wednesday, and then it, Thursday is a two episode day. But we also do, like, we're doing things that just isn't just us at the desk now. So we we shot a music video today, wow. and a couple other dance? segments. There was no dancing. It's mm. actually almost like an anti-dance mm. music video where all the dancing is creating in, in post. Mm. And I'm actually not joking. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I, I started to dance at one point, and, he was and told they, not to. they told me that <laughs> I had to be still. You're, so you're I, being too active. You were right about the dancing. <laughs> stuff. We're going to make you active in post. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, we were. But on the way over here, we were just. T- I was talking about the first thing we shot this morning, which was with uh, uh, this girl who's a contortionist, mm. and uh, she's a YouTuber. As well, 
Sophie Dossie is her name. She'll be on an upcoming. I think or, I, uh, I met her. Yeah, uh, she'll be on an upcoming uh, episode of Good Mythical Morning. But it's it, it, right now we're in those days where I'm like, that was today, right? You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I don't know if that's a good thing. It's uh, intense. It's an intense. A thing. lot of different things. Uh, there's just a lot of different. We, we've kind of gotten to this uh, habit of just kind of showing up at the next thing and executing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then moving on to the next thing that may be very different than the thing that was right before it. So you guys are at the point kind of where you just show up. How involved? <clears throat> because now the show has become something new, right? It's kind yeah. of transformed recently. I mean, it's at a certain point, we had to get somebody else to be in charge of our schedule. So we just said what the parameters were. Right, okay, right, you right. know, for the sake of our families, we only want to <laughs> right. work this amount of time. And so our only late night is a Thursday night. And, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. Uh, then you guys get jerked around in order to try to, you know, accommodate Not us. Not jerked but, around. But that's how it... For the triple threats? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, but it's... At any point, on any given day, we're, we're, th- we're thinking of or responding to new ideas and just saying, okay, mm. yes to this idea, no to this <coughs> idea, shaping this idea, and then prepping other episodes that well, we said yes to because i think ago. that that would mm. it would be easier if we were just showing up but no we're not <clears throat> we're still very much involved in the creative process now we have, we have a great team uh, of writers and we're not coming up with uh, they're coming up with the majority of the initial ideas mm. uh, but like right before we came here like the last thing we did after we shot the music videos we had like an hour-long meeting with mm. our team that does all our field shoots so the stuff outside so like the the wind baker s- stuff that right. we do with you there's a, that's a different team that handles that. So a different director, and then there's writers assigned to that. So we have a meeting where they kind of pitch us what they're thinking, and then we change it or update it or give the thumbs up. Um, it, I mean, it used to be, and, and then we're, we're stepping into the thing that we're shooting. So when we step into yeah. the thing we're shooting, we're accessing when we prepped it the day or a few days before, and then maybe a few weeks, a week or two before mm-hmm. when we said, yes, we want to do it. So it's a little, you're a little all of the, removed from the yeah. concept to actually being in it. Yeah, you got to reaccess it and say, mm. okay, this is this is why I was excited about this. <laughs> Interesting. And this is what's missing that I was excited about that I have to interject at the last second or, or or not, whatever the case may be. And it because yeah, it's it's funny we the the conversation continued between the two of us earlier, <laughs> and it was like yeah we we used to work on something, we we developed something we'd really believe in it. A video and then we'd work on it all the way through and then we'd start the next the thing. next it's one it's like chronological yeah very now, linear yeah and i mean because good mythical morning is so it's so formatted and it you know it allowed us to uh to hire people it. who could then make it make it into a system that mm-hmm. then we could you know not do everything you step into the sure, right stuff yeah. but it it gets a, it, it, it it can make you feel <laughs> crazy sure like Especially next week we're not shooting anything oh really? so and we do have every five weeks we have hmm. a dark week so that we, is so that's big, that's big. thank god yeah. for that yeah. i'm worried for you guys man like seeing the, the way you guys ground you ground. But, but what we're gonna do though is we're gonna go the two of us are gonna leave town mm. we're gonna go someplace and we're gonna come up with something else to create so really we, because we well, yeah, it's not a vacation. We're st- you're just escaping. Yeah, the well, day. Getting, getting out of the grind of, of mm-hmm. GMM. So, I mean, because we've always had something else going on at the same time as Good Mythical Morning, but when it kind of exponentially increased in November, we had to get a lot smarter about our time mm-hmm. to do those other things. So, you guys are involved in like a high level, high high level stuff. The concepts. Yeah. development yeah you think that that i think that's probably necessary for you guys to have the time to do other stuff like what you're describing yeah. i mean we only did so the first two years of gmm was you know between you know it's probably 90 percent us <coughs> um and then starting like the fourth season or so is when we're, we we brought in stevie our producer right mm-hmm. <coughs> and she had some we were just going off of instinct all along we had no production experience at all she came in with some production experience was like Mm. if you guys want to do anything else or you you want to we need to make this into more of a a system with efficiencies and Mm. we need to hire the right people interesting and at that point 
we started like that was when we made the transition. So this is probably twenty fourteen was probably the first time we started actually having episodes would go live and we hadn't even watched them. Mm -hmm. that, and that, so like four years ago or whatever, that was a, a big transition for us. It was like, oh, now we're we're putting stuff up that we don't even watch. We were there when we made it and we were there putting in the... Just because it's you're producing too much or what? what yeah, because mean? we were doing other things. It was like, okay, what, what things are we going to let go of? So like it, the process is you let go of the editing first, right? So that That's, was like... Right. Even for us That's still... Huge. That was that was difficult. <laughs> That's, That's tough. so difficult. Uh, so that was like 20... 12 probably letting mm -hmm. go of the editing how did you do that by the way how did you eventually come up like overcome that hurdle because it's so personal well i mean we were jason was the guy and we were over his shoulder mm -hmm. like literally i mean if, mm -hmm. if if you look at the card table where we shot the first incarnation of good mythical morning right behind the card table were our two desks pushed <laughs> up against literally each other just and just to the right <laughs> off right. out of frame was his desk mm -hmm. like when we were shooting the show if 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 I went like this, I, I could have I could have easily picked it picked his nose, <laughs> picked right. his nose. Right. Yeah, I don't know. And that happened occasionally. Around. It did happen occasionally. Just keep him honest. Uh, just yeah, just right. keep him up. Yeah, just get a little prize. Right. Just dig deep for a little prize. And what so, was my point? Well, I was I was. Oh, asking, I was over you, his shoulder. Yeah. I mean, it's it's easier. Again, when it I mean. When it's a format like that, you can start to develop it, and you can you can nitpick everything, and then it's like, and so next time do that. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until we found somebody uh, who w w in Stevie that it was like, oh, <coughs> this final product that she just oversaw is almost exactly what we would have. That's great. It may be a little own. different, but it was just as good. It was so. <laughs> it was like good enough. Yeah, because I totally well, just as good. It, maybe a little different, mm -hmm. but in the spe in some specific. It was there. But, yeah. yeah, but it was there. Because if that wasn't the case, then we would have never let go. And I, and I there's, feel a, there's a lot of YouTubers that never let go. It's yeah. hard. I feel like. Do you guys feel like you were lucky to find someone oh, that great? That, extremely. Oh, yeah. that was kind of the catalyst, right? For yeah. for extremely, you guys to branch out. Extremely lucky because we interviewed a couple of people, and. She seemed to be like she was the smartest person that we interviewed. You know, I think that that was the thing that we were like, this person's got to be smart. Mm. We're not going to have a lot of patience with somebody who's not. Mm. And she just very quickly uh, demonstrated that she was more than just a producer. She was mm. a creative partner. So, um, yeah, I think that's the key because people are so, and it's very difficult to find find those people that you can trust. Sure, um, but if you can, then you can. I mean, we would have never done, you know the book or the tour or buddy system or any of that stuff without being able to step out of a you know a daily show that just takes people are like oh it's just couple, it's just 15 minutes a day what do you do the rest of your time yeah, yeah. oh my god <laughs> yeah. you know right. you guys know that it's uh it's more it's more than a, I can't make job. A, video a, day. a video a day Jesus, alone man. is insane <laughs> yeah and now you have like you know, four me and Ela tried for a month about a year or two years ago to make a video every day we did it for 30 days and we almost got a divorce. <laughs> like, yeah. we hated but everyone. Well, that's was, what daily vlogs do. And period. it was only us? Like, no one, no help? Was it, were they vlogs? So, no, no, they were basically good Myth like... Morning ripoff videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Inspiration, right? <laughs> <laughs> but obviously without the production value and without looking good and being good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's not important. <laughs> no, it was, it was like a hybrid of like PewDiePie, Good Mythical Morning. We were sitting at a desk. We were talking or about Or some would be a reaction. Okay. Some videos some reaction like we usually okay. do. Yeah. Right. Just, it was an interesting experiment, you know. I just wanted to see what it was like, and it was miserable. It really was. <laughs> well, you probably, I mean, we've never, you, uh, we've done a lot of stuff that hasn't worked. Um, but you, it always works to teach you a lesson. You learn something from it, and yeah. it, that you is, almost always li uh, leads to something else. Yeah. It was a huge formative, really important, actually. I do really like some of those videos that we made totally, during that yeah. time. So it's yeah. interesting. I don't know. We yeah. suffered, but we <laughs> made don't, some yeah, You fun don't have stuff. to be... A lot of people are paralyzed because they're like, I don't know if this is going to work. Well, <laughs> you got to quit asking that question because yeah. it probably won't most of the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> you know? Do you guys have, you guys have like a golden age? You guys have been making content for so long. I feel like we have a golden age. Like when we look back at the videos we made when we were living in Israel. Uh -huh. we About had, the time we, we used we, to Yeah, watch. we discovered you guys. We were yeah, just coming up. Yeah. I just saw your like deprivation tank video and I was like, this shit is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the first video I saw of yours, guys. And um, 
I don't know. I don't know what. There was just like a Wild West vibe. Like, I can never make those videos now because they were awful quality. They were shitty produced. They were just awful. But <laughs> right. looking back, there's a certain charm, I guess. Yeah. You guys yeah. feel like you have a golden age of some sort? I, 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 I have in my mind, well, when we were making our local commercials. Right. Mm. <laughs> uh, and we made the first couple. I mean, there it's was. like oh, oh 09, maybe? Yes, yeah, so we made like Red House Furniture. Mm -hmm. Which like went re-viral a couple of like weeks a, ago. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard about that understand. happening. That's a strange thing. That's so funny. It's very so weird. weird. It's like um, ten years old. YouTube does this thing where they'll just put like your first video on everyone's homepage all of a sudden. Really? I mean, not your first, but like they'll go way back in your catalog. Right. And be like, here's this really embarrassing video that you probably should have unlisted. In our case. Not your case. <laughs> right. In like in case. everyone else's case. You guys have good content. The algorithm <laughs> thinks they're ready for it. Yeah. To go deep. They, deep they've, earned, they've earned the right to go deep. But anyway, as you were saying. <laughs> we were making, I remember we were making, um, we went to Coleman, Alabama and made what we ended up titling on YouTube, Epic and Honest Used Trailer Commercial. Something, something like that. Like that. <laughs> but it was this guy who had a business, <laughs> Coleman Liquidation. He would repo trailers, like mm. single wide trailers, and then he would he would sell them off his lot. So used mobile homes. Right. Yeah, this is as bad as it gets. And his name was Robert <laughs> Lee. And um, we would we would um, usually we would have like a phone interview with the people to see if they were commercial material. Mm. But once we found out his name was Robert Lee and we talked to his secretary, he, we could never get him on the phone. We could never get, we could never get to talk to him in any way, but we said, we got to go to this guy and make a commercial. And I remember we were there making the commercial and he, he didn't show up for three hours and we were documenting it behind the scenes. Mm. We had this idea that, you know, we're going to, we're just going to document the making of this commercial so people will believe how real it is mm -hmm. and how little we're actually doing. But we would show we're up. We're not changing his name or anything like that. It, but we, it was just the two of us. Mm -hmm. The two of us would get on a plane. With a camera. With a camera. <laughs> and so we documented all the interactions. And then we, with the same camera, the next day after we gathered all the intel, we shot the commercial. So I think we would set up a second camera shooting us shooting the commercial. Yeah, we had, just a, to we kinda, had a tripod. Just to make more of a... <laughs> story on our second channel right which yeah. became the good mythical morning channel yeah i know yes <laughs> and so robert lee finally shows up after literally waiting for him for hours like with the camera in my lap just, i wanted to capture the moment he walked in mm -hmm. and he you know he walks in and i'm like screaming let's start start filming and he's like y'all the boys from the commercial and he just like then for the next hour he didn't shut up telling mm. stories i'm like oh this is great <laughs> next day we had him like with a chainsaw cutting down cutting limbs off of trees in order to get a mobile home out of this person's yard in order to sell it the next day. And it was, it was just, it was scrappy, man. It was fun. You right. had this guy, it, it, you know, it's just us, us trying to make this thing happen. It's a crazy mm. idea. Just kind of, you know, looking at each other while this guy's got a chainsaw and it's like, this is it, man. This is the dream. <laughs> we could die at any moment. We could get crushed by a mobile home. I could get my arm chopped off by this this guy and then we went back to the hotel that night and we got on the phone with joe penna mystery guitar man mm -hmm. and so we were we were pitching him on working with us to make this make a video called t-shirt war which mm -hmm. was like eventually that became like one of our biggest viral videos at the time or whatever around the same time stop, like stop motion 2010 or so so it's so we were we were doing I guess we were pretty busy. I mean we were doing both yeah, it those, like we were it. scrambling doing both of those things at, at once. But I just I remember that moment when it was we had shot that all day and then we come back and we're talking to Joe on the phone and just asking him to work with us to make this mm -hmm. you know stop motion T-shirt war thing. And I don't know that's just the first thing I thought no, of and I was like yeah. that it, that was when we, you know we were just we. We just, just twist our brains trying to come up with something. And then right. you just go and do it. Just right. go that, and do it. That, yeah. that, it reminds me a lot yeah. of, what, of what we consider our golden age in that way. Yeah. I think it's about, like, just the possibilities, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know. And there's a desperation. Yeah. And you, yeah. And you, we just, had and kids got at home. You've really? got the fans. You yeah. Know, wow. Thirsty. Just, yeah. Thirsty kids. Just. Well, yeah. <laughs> we got a lot of motivation. But, but it's interesting because 
and I'm sure you guys have the same thing, but when you have that era that you kind of look back at, well, there's a contingent of fans who look back at that, yeah. and it's like they always point to that. Yeah. And they're like, when is it going to be like that again? It will never be like that. Well, it'll never be like that again. But I yeah. do have this theory that um, regardless of where this goes and what this becomes for any of us, um, I do think that there'll probably be a time we may be like, I mean, Link's hair will definitely be completely white. Um, mine will probably be at least halfway there. I think, I think it stopped. I think this is you have a nice little thing going like a storm mystique thing going on there. <laughs> <laughs> X-Men thing. Thank you. That's, yeah. that's what I need. Yeah, man. Embrace that. <laughs> but I think that uh there is an appetite for that to do that again, right? To be like, let's just take a camera to Alabama mm -hmm. and and see what happens. And so I do think that it kind of will come full circle at some point. My my opinion is mm -hmm. that whenever you try it, it it's never the same. It won't be the same. If and you try to like redo be, it, like whenever use, you try, yeah, what? to like you try to like to go back to to rebottle the magic, right? Yeah. But I I think that anyone anytime somebody finds your channel or finds something new, that's their golden era, right? Like, yeah, yeah. People yeah, back it, then, that's wh their whatever they fell in love yeah. with, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting, though. That's really cool to hear. How long ago was that? The story you're telling me, eight or nine years. Yeah. And yeah. were you guys already? big on youtube because you were talking about that wasn't viral yet all no it's interesting because that uh the video that link's talking about t-shirt war uh we had a few things that like got on the home page back mm -hmm. when getting on the home page was was right. it right it was like feature uh like even like as early as 06 07 just a couple of things the facebook song right but the <laughs> was the was a big but one that video the, the t-shirt war the thing that really put that on the map was Ray William Johnson talking about it. Oh. Wow. That's yeah. the real Damn. era, man. Yeah, yeah. And so he talked about it on wow. Equals 3 and ripped us a new one in but, a very friendly way. Like, he was like, well, it's, he, it's cool, but, you know, he did his... He did his shtick. Right. Well, and he did it because he and Joe were friends. We had never yes. met the guy. Right. And Joe flew to New York and helped him with his setup. Have you ever met Joe? No. no. You know who I'm talking about, right? Mm. Mystery Guitar Man, you don't know? That's... <sighs> he's early YouTube. Uh, no. It's, okay. It's like... Um, <laughs> he was like the stop motion guy. Like, We're new. We're new kids. Yes. The first. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was wave one. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you, you know, know Ray William Johnson. Yeah, of course. He Like, I know the name and I know what he used to do, but I never, like, watched him. Really? It was before. Oh, I was man. There. I mean, he pioneered... Yeah. N n yeah. I mean, he was... Everything he did, and he was was like a. Were, they were they were edit trick videos mm -hmm. where where he was the face of them, and he would. Um, I don't know exactly what he's doing now. He's he's doing stand up. Really? No way. Yeah. He's Whatever doing happened, he just did his channel just kind of. Well, I think he wanted to do other things, on. and he, he got he pioneered doing weekly video schedule. I he mean, was one of those people he, that like really proved that like I'm gonna do this. This like my video is gonna come out every week at this time mm -hmm. and then he got and he got uh he started getting substitute hosts and then he gave no, the no, show no. You're over talking to about ray now i'm talking about joe oh oh oh, oh. i thought you were talking about, ray. <laughs> talking about we were all we're, talking yeah. about ray you already knew about we ray i'm about telling ray. you about the person you don't know about okay. yeah but that, but in telling somebody about the person that they don't know about i mean i was, I was there's not why would you tell somebody about why would you tell somebody about the people they know about because we don't really Ela know. Doesn't because Ela oh, was saying oh, she okay. didn't really know about Ray. Oh. Ray is, well, is I think a I confused the conversation. Joe is a legend, too. I'll take the fault. Joe, <laughs> Joe is the legend. legend. Yes. Uh, Any, anyway, so uh, Ray owed Joe a favor, and that's why he roasted our video. Well, when you say roast, really, it was... Well, you know, what, what, whatever you call what Ray a, did to videos. Okay. He'd yeah. show the video, and he'd kind of make fun of it. Did it, get, did it rub you guys wrong? Because you say roast, like, ooh. Uh, he was the first person to publicly call us hipsters, mm -hmm. and I hadn't heard the term. Has that stuck? <laughs> that stuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, just, we, we embodied it. Yeah, we were like, okay, <laughs> now I know what I'm going for. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> but I, I literally remember, I was like, is that an insult? I don't, it must be because he's calling us hipster. That's pretty That's original so usage of that word that long ago, hipster. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah kind of yeah. started. Cutting uh, edge, man. He's, he's on the edge right. of everything. <laughs> man. Um, what was yeah. your point? <laughs> Rose, I'm not there's sure. no point. That's all. You know that, that was that <laughs> well, was um, one of the moments. Those those days. Um, those were the good old days. Those were the days of viral videos. 
We don't really have viral videos anymore. Do you notice that? Yeah. yeah. Like back we, in the we day. We definitely notice. <laughs> 50... <laughs> you talking about us? Personally, no. yeah, we get it. Back in the day, videos used to get 50 million views. That doesn't well, really happen e anymore. Even, I mean, the past 12 months, things have changed significantly yeah. with the, uh, you know, what getting traction on a video means, you know? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, you got any theories? <laughs> <laughs> I, I got theories. We can't even go there. I'm I'm, people are sick of hearing me monologue yeah. and conspiracy theory about YouTube. <laughs> yeah. I got theories for days. I have, like, you should see my room. It's you like a beautiful a mind. By now. <laughs> red yarn and shit. I've got Google Analytics, like, printed out and sharpie. Do you have to sleep in that room, or did you give them another space for uh, that? I'm, I'm deep yeah. in that room. Uh, <laughs> shit, I my... used to be like, oh, it's a conspiracy, and now I'm fully, like, I believe everything. She's like Charlie in the mailroom. <laughs> always sunny. <laughs> always sunny. Feel like your reference. Yeah, but yeah. You, I mean, you're you're 100 right. It's a <laughs> it's a different game. I mean, I think that <laughs> how's it affected you guys? Well, you know, it's interesting because um, starting in November, uh, when GMM became one of YouTube's originals, not you know not like a YouTube Red, but a YouTube original, they started financing the show. Mm -hmm. So. We don't know how long that will continue, um, mm. but at least, like, I, towards the end of last year, there were two things that were happening. I think there was, um, uh, we've always we've always sold a lot of integrations, like branding sure. has been a huge part of what I we remember, do. I remember, yeah. And um, that, it, it became more and more difficult to sell integrations for some reason. Really? It's like uh, people, you mean the sponsors themselves were no longer interested or something else uh it just seemed that wh whereas you go back two three years ago everybody was having to turn down i remember you all guys, kinds yeah. of opportunities sure uh and then like 18 months 12 to 18 months ago it, it seemed like that market kind of changed mm. and i don't know if it was related to people being nervous about youtube content or whatever obviously mm. our stuff has never been anything that sh anybody should be scared of but sure yeah, yeah you especially um, we supplemented all that with, you know, doing buddy system, writing a book, doing a mm -hmm. tour. We started d just kind of branching out. So we didn't really feel it. And then at the end of last year, when YouTube started financing the show, it's like, well, now it's it, we get paid a flat fee to make the show. It doesn't really matter how it uh, does. Right. Obviously, we're doing everything we can to make it as yeah. it's your personal thing. You want it to yeah. do well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the long term, it matters in the yeah. short. Yeah. Term, it's... So it, it's been interesting. I. I feel like because, and also with, you know, we kind of, we just diversified a lot in the past two years with merchandise and a lot of other things. So it wasn't just relying on YouTube ad revenue and then just integrations, mm -hmm. but that whole business has changed. Mm -hmm. We've just kind of moved out of the way right at the right time. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I don't know. I, it's very difficult to figure out what's going on because they say, they say all the advertisers are moving from traditional to digital, but <laughs> where yeah. are they at? <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Let's I, see that. I often think that too. Where are they at? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I feel the same thing happened to us right when the apocalypse hit. We went from making a lot of money to, to like, ba like barely. We're not going to cover bills. the bills <laughs> within two weeks, yeah. which right. was the scary part. Mm -hmm. Like you think you can have some sort of a plan, even though things are never like for sure we thought well i was like well you know worst case scenario we'll make this much and then when it hit we we're making like a quarter of what we yeah. thought was worth. well at any but rate, it was it was good because it, it pushed us to diversify like you guys right. like you just said that you guys ended up doing a book and a tour and mm -hmm. you know yeah i mean we had seen people doing that stuff for years you know uh doing like fan clubs and, and patreons and all do you kinds guys of stuff, do that you, know? you guys do patreon we had one but we closed it after once we, our channel got big, we, we started closed making it. like a living, I guess, like a comfortable living. That's always been our perspective That's interesting. on it. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah, I'm yeah. interested in in your in your perspective on that. Yeah, there are different views about it. I per I personally look, my my thing with Patreon is that a lot of people call it a scam. Okay, people go that far. Like Philly D, for example, a lot of people say he's scamming people with his Patreon. I think that's ridiculous. You can't, Patreon's like the most transparent thing ever. Like people, everybody knows what they're getting themselves into, right? You just, you're giving people money. That's the thing. Personally, I wouldn't, I would, if I had sponsors and a ton of views and of comfortable living that I was already providing all, everything I needed for myself and my employees, I wouldn't have open a Patreon. I mean, it's a, it's a little disingenuous, I would say at best, maybe. Yeah. 
I think that's how we've seen it in the past is that this is a thing that if you, if you can't figure out another way to do it, but mm -hmm. I think that, um, the conversation we've been having lately is, well, you could do something like that if the people who were uh, paying into that were getting something special that no one else mm -hmm. could get. Yeah. And that, you and know, so, so, so I think that's so in, in not in a perk sort of way, but in a the, the Patreon is just a lane for a certain a, a, a new service. It is yeah. a, it is a subscription service for sure. something that that you would be getting. Sure. Which I think, because so, so mm -hmm. for people... So it's separate. It's not, it, it's not to then, to take the place or to, to, to bolster what I'm doing over here where I'm already making a good living. Yeah, because if you're like, because the whole concept at the beginning was like, if you give us this much money, we'll be able to make this many videos. Well, once your, your videos are being financed by somebody else, you can't justify yeah. that. Exactly. So, um, <laughs> I you know, think... it's more like the Rooster Teeth model. Mm -hmm. Do the they way... have a Patreon? No, they, they, have like a subscription they have model. a subscription yeah. model and so, they've been doing that for years. It's like you go, you know, you go to the Rooster Teeth channel and you'll be like, um, they, it's a lot of content. Yeah. Some of it really pops and a lot of it doesn't, but it's like the, the, the people who are fans are so Com hardcore so, committed yeah. fans. What I would say is if someone in like your guys' position, for example, wanted to make a Patreon. I would say make your own platform yeah, we so had that this, it's clearly uh, a service. We had this discussion with Philly D here on the podcast because yeah. he gets a lot of criticism. He, he thinks of it as a service. Like yeah, that's exactly. He also brought up Bruce with it as an example. And I think we both were saying that I think like using Patreon has the context that comes with it. Yeah, you okay. Know? I understand that. And mm -hmm. I feel like maybe see, the new thing would be people creating their own platform to it's give that, that service anyway, i don't know guys, or unless anyone. patreon kind of gets a new connotation that, well but right they could, now they it's... could probably do a thing where it was patreon but it was white labeled so that it was your website or whatever yeah mm. and so the mechanics it's, behind the scenes were the same them. thing like a but, shop yeah. yeah that'd be awesome yeah. you know you guys out there? That you might already. It, it may already exist. <laughs> probably, that's, a, that's too good of an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, <laughs> like blank Trion. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think if people have something to offer and people are willing to pay for it, then there's just it's a beautiful transaction where everybody's whole and pure. <laughs> And right. There's nothing to complain. And about. then you, and then cause it's, it's, you, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, talk completely. Yeah. Right. Because I mean, things. Have, we had a great year last year. Did new things that worked. <laughs> mm -hmm. We do a lot of new things that don't work. Uh, the GMM is still an ongoing experience, experiment, you know, the expansion, uh, we're, we're well aware of that. Um, so you never know, like this time next year, what are we going to be saying? Like, how big is our yeah. team going to be? Who knows? Mm -hmm. So it's just like a portfolio, you know, you want to, sure. you don't want to have it all in one place. Definitely. I think the biggest issue, like Ela was saying, was just the, the context of it. Like you, you, it's something that's marketed as, and how a lot of people use it. It's like, I have... I get 100,000 views per video, and I have 100,000 subscribers, and maybe I get $1,000 a month from from AdSense. But I want to do this full-time, and you guys want me to do it full-time, so you're going to pay me. That's the context of it. So when you try to use it a different way, I think that you can get criticized mm -hmm. yep. by people because you've seen our te as taking yep. handouts. Yeah. So it's important to brand it in, in the appropriate <laughs> way, I would say. Yeah. With that being said... Let's diversify this portfolio. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. And cut it to the MeUndies <laughs> and our other sponsors. So we'll be right back after this brief break. Thank you and God bless. Thank you to Four Hymns for sponsoring this episode of the H3 Podcast. I'm just going to put this bluntly. Does your dick work? Does your Do you wish your dick worked better? Well, <laughs> sexual performance issues are more common than you think. Over 25% of new ED cases are guys under the age of 40. What a shame. What's ED? Erectile dysfunction, Elo. It's when your dick don't work. Well, let me tell you. 40% of men age 40 struggle from not being able to get and maintain an erection. Even the world's greatest actors can't fake one. I guess you can't fake it as a guy because there is a climax <laughs> for guys that is lacking in females. Mm -hmm. Can't fake that. Even the world's greatest actor. Why do guys turn to weird solutions or do nothing when they can get medicine and make it work again? God and created medicine, and therefore God wants you to have an erection. I don't know. Forhims.com, a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, skin care, sexual wellness for men. Thanks to science, you can take care of your ED. 
Hims is bringing medical grade solutions directly to guys in need. Medical grade solutions, real licensed doctors offering well known generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions to give your erection, take away the dysfunction from your erection. It's going to be hard, real hard, and real easy to get it. Not an herbal supplement. Subscription solutions backed by science. One ED pill, starting with a V, just came off of patent December 11th. And this is a game changer if you catch their drift. I do. Viagra. They're talking about Viagra. Oh. I don't know if I'm not supposed to say that, but. Um, there's no waiting room. There's no awkward doctor visit. There's no lines. Save hours by going to forhims.com. It's so easy. You just answer a couple questions. A doctor will confidentially review. Bob, boop, Bev's your uncle, and bang, you got a boner. Severe ED isn't just an issue for ritual guys in bathtubs. It affects men in the 30s and 40s, too. So, guys, hard made easy. Say hello to your little friend. Go to forhims.com slash h3ed yes that's h3ed i love that <laughs> url that's forhims.com slash h3ed try hims for one month today for just five dollars we'll get you started with just five bucks while supplies last see website for full details this would cost hundreds of dollars if you went to a doc a doctor or pharmacy forhims.com slash h3ed let's just come on the world's a better place when dicks stay hard they get hard easy and they stay hard fast and furious, boy. So if you're in the market for – was that – that feel? I mean, hey, it's a problem. I did say it's, it's a not. problem. Guy, guys, don't <laughs> – take the medicine and have a good time, man. Life's too short. <laughs> Thanks for to, to for hymns. And thank you to MeUndies. Yes, I love MeUndies because they make the softest freaking underwear this land has ever had. Oh, my God. It's so soft and cozy. I wear, I'm kind of a voluptuous bol man. I got a thick waist. And when I wear normal underwear, it can chafe. It feels awful. But this don't chafe me because it's the softest material I ever made. It's made from Modell, all right? You want to look good in your underwear and be comfortable, right? But that perfect balance is hard to find. Don't sacrifice style or comfort because MeUndies.com and you can find the best pair of underwear in the world. MeUndies will be the most comfortable pair of underwear you will ever own. Made from st sustainably forced, naturally soft fabric that is three times softer than cotton. Feel that and then feel your shirt, Ela. Tell me which is softer. Easily. Give me this. Ooh, this is kind of hot. Which way does this go? <laughs> it's for women. <laughs> which way like does this, this go? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that... Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Pretty normal. Do they not have thongs? Well, do they not have thongs for guys? Maybe I want to show my thickness. That's a normal. I like underwear. to wear my thongs backwards, so it splits my nuts right down the middle, and I like it to be soft when I do. Now, me undies for the fellas. Me undies diamond seamed patch cradle your jewels and give your stuff what? Your jewels. <laughs> They've got diamond seamed pouch cradles for your jewels to give you the support <laughs> you need without feeling too tight. That's what I was saying essentially. Ladies, you'll love the soft, eco-friendly fabric. So soft and touchable, and you don't have any balls that get split right down the middle. You're lost. 100% satisfaction guarantee. They guarantee you will love these undies or your money back. You've got nothing to lose by trying it. You've got a drawer full of underwear. You start the morning. You take one out. You don't care which pair it is. Well, here's my promise to you. Try these me undies pairs. You've got no risk because it's free shipping and money back guaranteed. And the, when the morning comes, you're going to open that drawer and you're going to go for it every time. This, incidentally, is not male underwear. What again? Here. This time. You. You're going to go for it every time. And you'll be like, man, my MeUndies is clean. This is such a good day. Right now, MeUndies has an exclusive offer just for our listeners. Get 20% off your first pair and free shipping. That's right. MeUndies is so sure you're going to love their underwear. And you get 100% satisfaction guarantee. So go to MeUndies.com. Slash H3. That's MeUndies.com slash H3. It's a limited time offer, so what are you waiting for? Start wearing the best underwear of your life. It changed my life. And it's time to let MeUndies change yours. MeUndies.com slash H3 right now. Thank you to MeUndies for sponsoring us and for him. So this is like the whole package, man. Get a new <laughs> dick. Get some new undies. You're going to be a new man. Support our sponsors if you want to support the show. Thank you so much. Let's get right back into it, shall we? 
Welcome, everybody, to the HD Podcast live here with Rhett and Link. I was just telling the cast as you guys were in the bathroom. It's it's kind of surreal to be sharing the table with you guys. Yeah. I mean, you guys are legends, man. I mean, God. I, I had one of those moments when we were doing the video, your video, and we were, like, on it. When we were in the restroom right now? Is that what you mean? <laughs> yes. We were talking compliments behind your back. No, well, no she was but with I, us in the restroom. Oh, yeah, she wasn't. I was just thinking how surreal it is, because we used to watch you so long ago, and now it's like we're here together. Well, let me give you guys some perspective <laughs> on you. Oh, no. You kiss I our, know what he's going to say. ass a little bit. <laughs> we're we're going to kiss your ass. No, 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 really. Because uh, it's funny, because I think that um, we don't end up watching a lot of YouTube now, right? I mean, we're making a lot of YouTube. Yeah. Uh, but every, and, and then... When I see things that are working, when I see things that are popular, 99 times out of 100, I'm like, A, I don't know why. Mm-hmm. B, I wish it wasn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? C, I don't think it should be. <laughs> Ooh, that's the same that? as B. <laughs> that's kind okay. of the same. It's a little redundant. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I remember the first... Is this D? Are you now on no, D? I, I moved past that. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> The first video of yours that I saw was when um, uh, I, mean, I think I saw the whole the the, the, the vape <laughs> yeah. thing. Like it's like, I probably saw that in like GIF form at, at mm, some point. Yeah, uh, yeah. That made I was friends. like, that dude's funny. <laughs> uh, but then uh, the first time I understood what you were doing was when uh, you had uh, you had iDubs on who like he, or he came over to your house or whatever dog like, noises yeah i can't remember ex- it was just it was um, the, oh it was probably the, the colorblind one where he climbed up Logan the balcony Paul? yes yes yeah. 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 so yeah i watched that it was so i started it it may have been trending i don't know <laughs> how i found it it wasn't <laughs> So, okay, it wasn't, it wasn't trending. What was the title on that video? It was uh, Seeing Same Colors, colors for, the for the First Time, time. I think. Yeah, so I watched that. And it was like <laughs> 17 minutes long or something. Mm-hmm. And then the first thing I'm thinking, because the producer, we always evaluate things as a producer. The first thing I'm like, wow, why did they make it so long? And I'm like, but I've been watching it the whole time. And then I was like, Link, come in here. <laughs> and I was like... This is incredible. Oh I came in there and I was like, first I was like, why are you watching YouTube at work? You know we don't do that. <laughs> right. and, and then I, then he started it over and I was like, I started this it is over. 17 oh minutes. And watched what, it. You think I got I 17 minutes? I watched the whole minutes? thing with it. I, I wasted over a half hour watching your video. You freaking watched it twice. Um, and then I was like, I watched it and, but then once, I, but the second then, time. But then I started looking and seeing that it was working like, People were watching. I was like, this makes me feel good. I'm like, <laughs> and, and I'm, it makes I'm me like, feel good that something that yeah. I understand and mm-hmm. something that I appreciate and is legitimately funny, mm-hmm. uh, but and also legitimately innovative. Like, it was, yeah. it was innovative. It broke, well, specifically, it broke the rules. It was, it was long. I, I, it did not deliver on the title and the thumbnail. <laughs> I was like, there's this guy trying to get into this guy's house, uh, and he can't get in this way. And then the he's fact making that it him took go him so long to get into yeah. your home. That was the. And I was, it was like, like, I love I, everything I, about this. I, yeah, I loved every second of it. And I was, I don't know. It's like it's that moment where you feel, oh, now they've got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that may well, mean we don't have it anymore. Yeah, honestly. There, you, it's like a threat, you know? Yeah, well, when you've been doing it as long as we have, it's well, like you, there, there's this feeling that, like, you, I mean, we're, I mean, we're both, oh, you're about to be 40. I'm 40. <laughs> she got left that. All right. <laughs> oh, you're already there. Yeah. And, you know, we, you're always kind of, you're, you're always asking the question, is the, our best work behind us, even though I really mm-hmm. believe it's in front of us. I really <laughs> believe that. If I was trying to give me a five, but I'll take it. <laughs> um, and so then you see things, it, <laughs> You know, but to me, it was it wasn't for me. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't an active threat. I'm threatened by the stuff that that I don't understand and can't explain, Mm. and makes me discouraged about just the platform. To see certain things, you know, I won't name names. To see certain things that get get so big, and then you're just like, yeah, is this really what this platform is rewarding right now? Mm -hmm. Well, it's really sucked. But I had the complete opposite reaction. That's all you got. That's amazing. But let me say that it wasn't. It wasn't. I didn't perceive. You guys as an active threat. I just, I know, from a I know psychological perspective, I think that 
I think that was something that happened emotionally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because of, because of fears that you have of maintaining relevance and mm. uh, making a living and, you know, mm -hmm. being able to continue to do something, you know, used to. And then it always happens when you're doing something <coughs> creative and then you see something really good and you're like, whoa. You don't know how to Could write. I do that? Well, but the, for, I think for... the bigger thing was. <laughs> not was to say that. <laughs> it <not> felt. <laughs> the thing I loved about it was, A, it was very funny. And, and B, it broke all the rules, meaning C, and I, maybe I'll get to a D. It made me feel <laughs> like you're making exactly what you wanted to make. You're not, mm. you know, it starts to eat away at us when we feel like we're playing a game. We're like trying to win a, win a game that of YouTube, mm. you know, it's. Everyone and, and feels we like do, that. It's a it's a rat race. It's yeah. like playing a game where the rules are right. constantly changing. So when yeah. somebody wins Even by worse. doing something that there's no way. You could have been playing the game. That's mm -hmm. what it felt like mm -hmm. as a viewer. That so then I was left with, wow, they must just be legitimately expressing themselves. <laughs> that I'm, I'm envious of that. So it wasn't. So well, threat may be a deep if, thing, if it makes but you like feeling better. a surface thing was like jealousy. That like oh now, man, I w I wish we could just do exactly what was on our brains right now. But we got to run it through all these filters, and we got to talk about the thumbnails. <sighs> and then I I. I guarantee you that conversation devolved into a bitter discussion over the amount of time that we would spend on titling and thumbnailing. We always complain about that. You know, it's like, okay, it's you, you, you work hard to make this movie, and then the only thing that really matters is, the, you know, the DVD cover art. Right. I yeah. hate it so much. It's, it is quite I'm the one who makes the thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I first of all, it. let me just say, if it makes you feel any better, I think a lot of our fans watching it right now are saying to themselves, yeah, that was the last good video they made. <laughs> Gold <Golden age. laughs> So, Well, that, 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 was, that was my D. That was kind of a... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I think that mo that video was kind of a... was a just a beautiful moment where things lined up for us. And, and, and we had a great collaboration with Idubs, mm -hmm. too, who was super funny. But I'll say that one of my favorite formats of videos we've made, and it's hard to find good people to make it with, is this format, format where somebody comes for some reason. Like we made one with Steve-O. I don't know if you guys saw yeah. it. It, it. I thought that one worked really well yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Would you guys want to make a video like that where you barge into my house to react to something and then we go on some absurd journey together? I would love that's, that. That's the template. I would love to do that. Link is giving me lukewarm, <laughs> not in. No, he, he's giving you. I'm the, like, oh I, my we gosh. would love to do that, but I'm afraid to commit because we just, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I only can do things between the window of seven and nine. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I I I hate saying no, and I think in this in the new year, I think that's I'm not going to use the R word, but you what know, what's the R word? word? Resolution. Oh. oh, wow, you're so sophisticated. We're in, we're in February now, so you definitely can't use the New <laughs> yeah, Year's resolution. Yeah, it's too late. Yeah. But this is, I mean, this has been the year so far of trying to recapture our own ability to be creative outside of a timeline <coughs> and a structure and a schedule. And it makes it really hard to say yes to anything else. Mm -hmm. So that's why I got this look on my face. It's like, I hate saying no to things that you want to do. You know, that's very difficult. Um, but you don't want to say a fake yes, which I appreciate. And I just said I would love to do that. Which is, <laughs> which is yeah. yeah, that's true. Honest. You know what? And 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 I on the other side of the table didn't expect to ever make that video either. <laughs> I would love to, but you know, things, life is life is tricky. You Shredder, know, are you can. destroying our set? Is, <laughs> wow, he's, he's, he's revealing. He's like, well, it's like Toto and the Wizards of Oz. He's like, yeah, what's <laughs> behind <laughs> that curtain? Um, it's just a wall. Yeah, it's, sadly, there's no magician there. Well. I would love to make that video with you guys. Yeah. If it ever well, came let, to Well, let's me. have a uh, tentative commitment that'll happen <laughs> okay. in the next 36 months. I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I'll go for I'll, that. I'll find an evergreen video. I'll pitch you guys an idea, and then you can think about it. Okay. And yeah. And, and, and you know I just, I just need, to do it. I need mm -hmm. just one afternoon. You just get the ball rolling. Or evening. Yeah. You know, to toss the ball afternoon. over the fence. That's, that's how you get it going. But you guys all have families, so is the weekend si uh, is it? Uh, how do you say sacred? Pretty sacred, yeah. yeah it's yes. got to be so sacred. How many kids you guys have? That's good. Two and three. three. Wow. Yeah. Bisectomies. Yeah, not anymore. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> You're stuck on I that know. number forever. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of bisectomy video, love that one. Yeah. Oh, you did watch that one? I, yeah. Pff, 
that just blew my mind. I was like, because to me, you guys were talking about like, how is he doing this? That was kind of one of those videos, right? Where you guys broke the rules. You made a video where you both went and got vasectomies together. And it's <laughs> and one your, of your... And your videos are so family friendly, yeah, I mean, brand friendly. you guys showed the fucking... It's anti-family. <laughs> you showed the loom. Yeah. Or you showed uh, the tube. One. Yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the but it was mangled, no longer attached. The mangled... <laughs> Yeah, tube that connects your scrotum to your penis. You felt know, like that was edgy there. for us. It, it, yes, yeah, it was. It Ex was edgy yeah. to pull it off. You know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's funny. The funny. It, if you posted that today, I think it would be demonetized. That's actually. Uh, oh wow. That's probably. But maybe age restricted even because of that yeah. shot. No, just, just the, the whole, whole thing. Premise. Just the whole just premise. Saying well, do you think a lot okay, of dick talk? Let's talk. Let's talk conspiracy theory. Let's talk. Please, you know. Now you're in my fucking. <laughs> so, now you're in my world, boy. Because I, I think, to me, uh, I, I think that the driving force. Oh, Shredder pooped and he's eating it. Oh my god! Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's. Uh... Dan, Dan, help! Shredder, why do you guys eat it, man? I mean, I understand this is doing a... it. He has this awful habit. I can't, you can Maybe, really well, call. Know, there's some animals that double digest things. He's not Maybe one he of just, them. <laughs> That's a cow, man. He, he has once. He has once. Maybe an antelope. Oh Christ, Shredder. <laughs> he has once ate his shit and then puked it out, and it was a puke shit, and it was <laughs> oh, really oh, one of the most oh, awful things I've ever seen. Oh. Oh Shredder. Oh, I love you, but you really you eat your own shit. And yeah, man. He was just licking my face a second ago. Oh, this guy catching a whiff here. <laughs> Do we cut this part, or do we let it ride? Oh, we let it ride. <laughs> it's riding. Yeah, this is what the people pay for. How, man. how can you be so cute and so disgusting at once? Like, Windex ain't gonna help. Ain't gonna help with that one. Here's blue spray and spray it on. I mean, you can't see, but they're currently spraying Windex. Yeah, man. Uh, He's such a sweet dog. But... If you'll notice, Ethan has not moved from his seat to try to help in any way at all. Look, I got Someone's got to man this ship. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I understand. That's what I say. <laughs> yeah, we can. We'd, we'd be okay. Yeah, I mean, you, you, can, it, it you is are your professionals dog. too. It you know? is your dog. Just, Gary. Just give us the topic. Okay, so they've got it under control. Yeah. I... <laughs> I think so. I mean, it's already uh, past the time, you know. Yeah. Either you're doing a great job. Ethan is trying to give positive reinforcement to cover up the his insecurity with not helping in any way. <laughs> yeah, I think it's. it's totally I wish fine I could give my. Point. How do you dis How do you make a dog not eat its shit? That is the, my dog. My man, dog has that never a done question. that. What it's kind a of dog you thing. Got? Yeah, I know York Yorkies apparently are curious. They're into scat. Is that something people grow, grow out of? Some grow out of it, I've read online. And that makes me concerned. I don't like some. Some. The some don't. Because I have a feeling he likes it a lot. Like, he likes eating shit a lot. And that mm -hmm. makes me well, worried. Maybe, you know what? Maybe you just let him do it. You ever thought about that? He pukes. Like it. so he pukes. Gross. It's uh, not good for him. Well, maybe. Yeah. And, he bring, and he brings it inside. He goes on the couch. He carries shit like, oh, I'm so happy. I've got my new favorite <laughs> jute. When he pukes it, does he, does he insist on going outside to puke it? Because that seems like a good closed he, system. He's cleaning up his, his no. stuff. No, you know? no. No, he poops outside and then he brings it inside. Isn't that strange? <laughs> and then pukes it. And then pukes it. <laughs> it's a gift. On one of his blankets. It was so disgusting, I had to hose it outside and yeah. leave it outside. He's just trying to oh, offer gosh. you guys a gift. This could be a formative period in your relationship. You gotta, just you take gotta a nibble. This very well. <laughs> just accept his graciousness. Okay, so back to the conspiracy, conspiracy theory. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I oh, that, that was your that was your diversion to not have to go back yeah, to it. What back. is this? <laughs> uh, I, I'm, this is, I, I'm not even gonna say conspiracy because I'm gonna let you fuel the conspiracy. I'm just gonna I'm gonna give you the perspective. So, one of the things that we talked about is it seems like most of the trends. Mm -hmm. On the things that end up popping on YouTube right now, it's driven oh, by Shredder's terrorism. You know, it's on a lot of <laughs> All right, I think we can't keep him. <laughs> here, let me just put this here. Okay. Oh shit. <laughs> See, you guys, you guys, this is your first child. You've got like <laughs> yeah. your new parents. You've got it's, we're running around. You've got you've got to set boundaries, guys. You've really got but to figure so this out. But he's so cute. I understand. How do you like, discipline my, a little? I am wrapped around my dog's finger. Trust me. I, Link's dog I, has I no understand. discipline. Link's dog can't do anything. I understand. <laughs> That's um, what I, I when I first got him, I was like, we're not going to feed him human food. We're going to put him in his cage. We're going to do this right. Good discipline dog is good for everyone. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't even eat his food anymore because he's waiting for us to feed him. He hasn't eaten today because he's waiting for us to give him like food. Steak. 
Oh, see, really? you, yeah. you, the, it's, okay. it's, it's too late. <laughs> you've got, you got, you, it's, you got to hit the reset button now. Yeah, dogs never, don't have it's one not of those. too late. What do I, I mean? Uh. Or just get a second dog. It's right on the taint. That's what where the reset button just, is. Like restart, as in get a new dog. <laughs> no, add a second dog. How does that help? And you won't care about either one as much because you won't be able to. You don't have that much love. I mean, I'm just because applying what to, I learned about having actual human children. Up. Everybody says right. that you're this is my experience. Yeah, you've only got so much love and you divide it up amongst your kids. Then you care less and you're like, right. That's, right. that feels better. Yeah. yeah. Mm. People who have more yeah. kids love each child less. I mean, that's, that's, I have this serious. amount of love to give. <laughs> that is a fact. My we mom did would it, disagree. We did it with actual humans. I mean, you, sh you shouldn't feel bad at all doing it with, with a dog. Somehow I feel like because he's so cute and innocent and blameless it's harder with him even though down have a kid so who knows right babies they have a coming i don't know if he's <laughs> blameless or always cute i just watched him eat his own yeah. feces but you know his intentions were good <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I believe that as as rhett said he probably just wanted to share you should never tell what, what what am i doing telling somebody else how to parent yeah, their children of course. no i mean listen. that's like the rule number one listen. i'm sorry I'll hit the Maybe reset right. button. I'm not telling you how to parent. All right, let's all hit. Let's hit okay. the reset button. Reset button. Conspiracy, yeah, man. Conspiracy theory. The thing that's driving popularity and views on YouTube right now are the tastes and habits of children. Thank you for yes. acknowledging that because that's something that most people don't understand. Because you said, for example, like when I see something popular, I don't understand why. And my answer, which has held true throughout the time, and I'd always say, is kids. It's kids. Right. And now I, we have to be careful how we talk about this because a lot of people just assume because Good Mythical Morning is generally family friendly. We, there's, we, we approach and cross some lines, but it's, mm -hmm. it's PG-13 at worst. Yeah. A lot of people just were like, well, your show is for kids. Well, if you look at the analytics on GMM, the number one demo is 18 to 24. The mm -hmm. number two demo is 25 to 34. Mm -hmm. And the number three demo is the 13 to 17 is the, is the, is the younger crowd. Mm -hmm. We do have a lot of kids who watch just because of the nature of the show. Um, so, because people will be like, well, did you, you guys are making a kid show. Well, we're not. We're making a show that's accessible to kids, but it's not for kids. It's not, that's not I the, completely the, agree. the intention. I mean, Post Malone, for example, he watches yeah. every day. God bless his soul. Right. Um, <laughs> and he does, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And I, I knew he was a fan, but when he started calling out specific things from episodes, I was like, he really is a fan. He <laughs> is. Yeah, no, he, yeah. He's told me he watched you guys every uh, morning. I know. Yeah. I turned to him when he was on the show in between things, and I was like, man, it is really nice to have somebody on the show that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> who, 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 who likes the show. That knows is what it is. No, that, I mean, like, that's, that feels good. Yeah. yeah. Someone like him, he's a, he's a cool one. Right. And the episode yeah. with him was great. Oh, yeah. I want to ask you guys about that. But, he's great. But so, let's reset button. But you yeah. see Back all these to... things that are working, and you're like, is the tastes of kids? It's what it's what they want. It's it, you know it's you know it's I have a nine year old, mm -hmm. and he has a nine year old cousin. <clears throat> back in uh, North Carolina, and like I saw the stuff that they were bringing up on YouTube when kind of left to their own devices back when back around Christmas. What was it? Um, you don't want to say? I, Can we, I take a guess? I think we all know. Was it Logan Paul? No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't let my kids watch the Pauls. It so, wasn't the Pauls. Was it the it, gums? It was something that. It was something. I don't, I don't know. It that. was something. Rice that, gum. No, oh. no, no. It was something that was for nine year old. It was totally family friendly, but it was like l lots of like very lots of yelling and I'm saying things in a way that so kids will listen to me mm. and doing things that kids enjoy and mm -hmm. you know what okay interesting sure. and it, I don't have anything. doing some things that we do on our show but, but then doing them in a way that is obviously packaged for very small They're children to st pay yeah. attention kids <laughs> right, right, right. and I don't have anything against that kind of content but what I have a problem with is when that kind of content is driving all the 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 dynamics of the platform that I'm yeah. trying to make a living on, and for you guys, mm -hmm. if you're doing something that is, um, you know, it's not it's not as broadly accessible. I mean, obviously there are kids who watch, but it's just like it's more adult oriented than the stuff that we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's stuff that is more likely to be demonetized under certain mm -hmm. rules. Mm -hmm. It's just like I I just don't understand what the I don't know what the solution is, but I think the problem is, is that everything, uh, so much of what's being, dri is being driven by these tastes of w what kids want. And so therefore you just get things that become unwatchable to adults. Mm. And then well, devil's advocate here for a second, but isn't YouTube 
doesn't everybody have the power to upload a video? Of course. Doesn't and do, doesn't everybody have the power to find an audience? No. No, I'm not saying. I'm just saying. If you make, for, if you make certain, discussion. it's like technically no, not, on paper, yes. On no. paper, but it's more complicated. No, but if you make certain content There's, that is it, it, demonetized, then yeah, no, you 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 don't have the same power as somebody who doesn't have their videos. Demonetized. I would say back in the day that was true. There was a pure democratic process of like the best rises to the top. Um, but in today's world, YouTube backend is controlled by machines and classifiers and algorithms that the people who are working YouTube probably don't even understand how they work, right? They give them information and then they, it's machine learning, right? So they watch a million videos and then they show, they have all these really complicated algorithms. They show videos to average users and this one did, got less clicks and this one got less watch time. And it's just this huge, ins unfathomable, no human could understand it, huge working machine. And there's just way more kids on YouTube then there are adults and they sit there and they'll they'll watch the same video over and over again yeah a lot of videos will get it's kids the way they listen to music is they'll put one song on and they'll listen to it 40, 40 times in a row right, right. That's yeah what children do yeah adults don't do that mm -hmm. normal adults don't do that well adjusted adults Interesting. Don't do that. so you're saying was that, that a shot at me because i don't do that <laughs> <laughs> no and so i i'm saying that i have observed children watching youtube videos and they watch, they, they get into Which, by the way, I, we do not recommend. Don't watch kids watch YouTube. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. That's like a whole <laughs> layer. <of what>, they, <laughs> they, they like get, the video's bad enough. <laughs> right. <laughs> they get into loops. So they'll, they'll click on the next so flashy your, video. Your, and they'll watch the same thing over and over is again. Is your theory that there's people re-watching videos and it's fudging the numbers? Well, I think definitely that's part of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. How, do, how else do you get... The shit that really blows my mind is like these toy channel reviews. And we talked about how there's oh, no yeah. viral videos anymore. These have like 100 million freaking views, the Repeat dude. views is a huge, I don't know what percentage, but I, I remember the way we thought about, you know, we had these, we were talking about the other day, we had this uh, Baby Einstein was this thing that was, it's probably still so around. It was a DVD, I mean, I had VHS copies that were given to us when Lily was a baby. She's 14 now. <laughs> yeah, so we would we would put the kids down in front of this. It was, it was just, it was just this dvd where kids would be playing with stuff and it, no it was footage of hands playing with hands toddler playing toys, with toys with classical music <laughs> and because it was called baby einstein we Wait, thought it was on. making our kids smarter it's a dvd <laughs> series okay that, this shit trips me out how does youtube or the dvd people whoever how do they decide that this person with hands or this person playing with spider-man and else or whatever is better like what subtle weird shit that i don't understand mm. are these like g masterminds like evil geniuses who play with the barbie doll the right way that end up getting 100 million views then there's there's well, ten thousand people I don't trying to do the same thing i don't know who figured it views. out to begin with but i do know that they took the same principle and listen i would take a dvd and we'd be on a vacation i might have just brought one right well they i could put that care. thing on and my kids would watch it five times in a row and i feel horrible as a parent for mm -hmm. having let my kids yeah. watch that much screen time at that time but sometimes when you, you have kids that's just the only way you, you can escape yeah. and uh sometimes but, they eat their own feces right and you, you <laughs> but find that's a way to the principle it. that's operating <laughs> the same uh, that's right. principle that's operating in those hundred million views that reset button that, oh, that, sorry. That, that's where those hundred million <laughs> views are coming from yeah and i think it's in one sense it's a good thing but if it's shaping everything else and it's influencing everything mm -hmm. else, and those, I don't have any answers. I don't know what the answer is. So, yeah. in my but, opinion. But I see what you mean. It's like all goes to one pool, and that's a problem. Yeah. The problem that I see on YouTube now that really grinds my gears, as they say, <clears throat> is the Paul Brothers. The kids stuff doesn't bother me because here's how I see it. There's all these eight, seven, six, five-year-olds who are consuming so much content and they're going to grow up someday and they're going to be coming looking for our videos the kids today the 12 and, and that's true of the teenagers too but the 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 idols the people that these people look up to the paul brothers and but that's kids too that's young kids it is it's driving like, i would say it's like between 8 and 15 okay yeah these are like really awful people as we've learned in the case of the paul brothers and before it became public knowledge where we all were like oh yeah these guys are low character people they were being promoted by youtube they had shows they had movies they were being recommended they were in my opinion as far as i can tell a very conscious 
effort was made to promote them because they knew that their appeal was so strong and, and undeniable. So I really do fear about like youth being corrupted in a way. Well, there's so, no filter. Like on television, you have so executives. I, I agree with one part of that. So, and when I say kids, I'm, I guess I am including like eight to 12, eight to 13, eight to 14. Because I am thinking about not not well, just the toy videos, but I am talking about because they're those, the Paul to, those are different. They're, they are they the are toy videos are like two, that's three, like, four that's year like olds. That's just yeah. But mm -hmm. I, but but so the, in the way that a toddler will watch uh, a toy video with very, very little discretion, a twelve year old will watch the Paul Brothers with no ability to see. They don't know what's beyond what yeah. what, what, what character is right, yeah. and so and, 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 and be able to. To see somebody who's just me, 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 me. This is what mm -hmm. I own. This is who I am. This is my world. This is this is my posse. You want to be a part of this. Yeah. Kids haven't developed the – a lot of kids haven't developed the moral compass yet of course. Yeah, to sure. make decisions about, well, this is probably not the kind of person that I want to spend a lot of time sure. buying their stuff and watching mm -hmm. their content. Um, and so but, – but your theory is that they've been, you know, manually pushed. No doubt. I mean just look at – Logan and Jake Paul were like the centerpiece of YouTube Rewind. Channels like us, I mean, well, I'm. There's huge channels that have been in the past three years, huge channels. You guys know, like Filthy Frank, for example, iDubs, channels like these have dominated they entire would, years in terms of growth and views, yeah. and they're and they not, would even not even included. Be invited to, right. to and, and meanwhile, Logan and Jake Paul are front and center. They're being offered shows. And, you know, when you give someone a movie, or a show through YouTube Red, generally they come with a certain amount of promotion. I personally have a conspiracy theory that there is some backroom chats about who to promote. And sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. When Vine collapsed, all these Viners came over and they all of a sudden just dominated the whole platform. Jake and Logan Paul were Viners. There's people like Liza Koshi, who I think is super talented. Mm -hmm. I love her. her. She has deserved success. But her growth was in my opinion, unorganic. Yeah. Hers and all of her contemporaries. And, well, we're huge fans of hers as well. Yeah. And, huge and, fan. And mm -hmm. I think I, I, I put her in the category of someone that, uh, first of all, I've met her and she's like a quality person. Yeah. Uh, I have too, and have I agree. To, yeah. And also her content is like, you get it, you see it, and you're like, this is a, like a special talent. This is a person yeah. that's got a special she's so good. talent. Yeah. And it's not something that just 12-year-olds are into. It's something that I can watch mm -hmm. and be mm -hmm. super entertained by. Um, when when it gets to th theories about why something pops and why something doesn't pop, it's just a. It's like to me, it's like looking into a, just a, an abyss. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, we, we can we can speak for the, the the growth of Good Mythical Morning when it really started the subscribers started to really gain exponentially mm -hmm. a few years back. Mm -hmm. um, we went to YouTube headquarters in order, and we, and we made the rounds and, and meet with a lot of different departments. But after what? After your huge explosion. This in the middle kind of it. Kind of in the middle okay. of it. In the okay. middle of it. Okay. So this was what, four years ago? This is like probably no. 20, 2015. Okay. Three years ago. There, the, the question, the, the point of us going up there was to collectively figure out how it was happening. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was because when you guys we, started exploding, was it just kind of like you're doing your thing, you're doing your thing, and then all of a sudden you're just like, yeah, they, boom. well, they, I mean, the mm -hmm. algorithm was tweaked and it was trying, I mean, we were talking to algorithm people. Like, mm -hmm. I was, I was joking with them uh, who's going to show me the algorithm i want to go into the room where the <laughs> algorithm sits mm -hmm. you know and they were kind of laughing and, but then they were like well we can't you know we, we don't mention <laughs> so a couple of people thought i, I wasn't joking and they no, but, gave me the serious answer which was but we did we go, can't show you we did the go, algorithm. It, no but they because did. there is no they did we went into the room with the engineers and they yeah, were like, we went in there. Here's the algorithm. And he guy turned his laptop around and it was all this code. And then he turned it back yeah. around to mm. tease us. He probably just didn't like control you or something yeah. on the <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure I don't it know if he's <laughs> But my point is, I mean, in all those meetings that we had with, with the technical algorithm people, as well as, um, I don't I mean, we met with so many people when we like, made the rounds that day in San Bruno. But it was trying to figure out. <laughs> 
what contributed to the success story. Mm-hmm. You know, they were they were analyzing and 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 trying to read the tea leaves of their own algorithm mm-hmm. to figure it out. Mm-hmm. So it's it, there certainly wasn't one team that we met with that was like, yeah, we did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I it, it, it I mean they're very. You know, I, don't get me wrong. I'm not here to to toe the line for anybody, but that's honestly the impression I got when we went up there. It was like, hey, th- check out. They did a presentation. Check out this amazing success of Good Mythical Morning in terms of watch time. Like, and uh, you know, and then it, and then they were trying. To, we were trying to figure it out in the room. I find that interesting that you guys were looking outward instead of being like, hey, our show's great. And of course. Was it that well, unbelievable? Because it's, cause it's never growth? been that well, simple. So for, for mm-hmm. me, the analogy I like to think of is, is like a, it's like an ecosystem, right? And you've got – an ecosystem is constantly trying to reach equilibrium. Just, mm-hmm. you know, you've got an island that's got different animals, and those animals represent different channels, right? Mm-hmm. And it's being – but you've got humans who come in, and they tinker with the ecosystem because they have the power to do that. And they make these little changes, and they don't realize that, oh, well, if all of a sudden we – you know, kill some of these rats, then all of a sudden there'll be less cats or cat, and that's a fitting is fitting in this analogy about YouTube. But so <laughs> I, I think that sometimes people are they're tinkering with things So uh, it, to play the devil's advocate and try to be a little sympathetic to that side of it, uh, to the YouTube side of it. It's like. I think ultimately what they want is they want a healthy platform that's got uh, that's rewarding people who are doing who are doing great content that's going to make them a lot of money, mm-hmm. you know, and is going to please advertisers. Since now advertisers have suddenly said we demand to be uh, to be associated with content that isn't going to compromise our brand, mm-hmm. which I understand and respect that. Me too. Um, sure, but sometimes <laughs> I think. That you've got a lot of people working on this thing and pressing certain buttons That's and moving, true. and then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, there's this imbalance, and now mm-hmm. this thing right. has happened, and now we're a little bit embarrassed, and now we have to come out and do some <laughs> PR things. So I can't imagine how difficult it is to manage it. <laughs> One thing I'll say for sure: there's a ton of different teams there, and they all don't really communicate with each other because it's such a big company. So what you're saying is definitely true. I think when the when around the time you guys blew up was around the time that a lot of channels blew up. It was kind of like a new wave. I think like PewDiePie and Jacksepticeye Mark Pl- Markiplier were all yeah. blowing up as well. The, I, the, the, watch, the switch to watch time. Mm, was that yeah. what it was around that time? Yeah. And I, and, I, and I think they were looking for shows like you guys. You guys were in the right place, right time. You were making oh, great yeah. content. And and it's what they wanted. I yeah. think definitely know. right. We've always said that it was right place, right time. Yeah, yeah. we've always. But we, but but when you say they were looking for shows, I, I think I th- think what they, what what we understood was that nobody looked at our show and made any decision because <clears> then they said, oh, as a what we want people to stay on the platform, so we're going to reward. This is what we were told, and it made sense. We're going to the algorithm has been adjusted to reward people staying on the platform, videos that keep you watching YouTube videos, not even the same channel. On the platform. So, the, you know, you don't abandon the video. You you, you watch, you re, you're retained through the video. And if they're longer and you're, re, you're retaining them, mm-hmm. even better. So mm-hmm. if it's a Let's Play or if it's two guys behind a desk, algorithm don't care as long as, oh, wow, this is uh, 12 minutes. <coughs> 20 minutes? Well, and then, and then they, they're clicking they through another it. and another and another? Because the, the first thing that blew up with the watch time algorithm was gaming channels. Mm-hmm. And then they, and then, right. uh, so all the Let's Plays got huge. You know what I think? And then they, they tweaked it. And they it, tweaked and it. And, I, and, and made, it, was it was on the gaming, homepage. It wasn't gaming channels. It was, Leafy is here. I think single-handedly killed <laughs> I don't that remember. Whole, um, by the way, when you guys were coming, I don't think they ever made any any choices and I think like the growth of channels like Leafy's here is proof of that because it was all about watch time is king have you you know about him yeah so he's like he he was was he the guy who basically invented the let's playing and doing commentary at the same time kind he of didn't yeah. invent it but he popularized it yeah. okay he would just talk over footage of of video games yeah but he was a real nasty guy yeah, yeah, yeah. He would make fun of kids and people with autism and like he was just a real nasty guy right and he was blowing up. He was getting like, uh, I remember. He was posting uh, every one, day. Yeah, he was posting every day. But I remember one month he was getting like, like, 
over a, two, three million subscribers in a month or something, or not that much, but it was insane, right? He was he was the fastest growing channel on YouTube for like six months, and everyone was just like, "Man, this guy is fucking awful." Yeah, he's a really trashy dude. I feel like they di directly reacted to that because yeah. let's plays inherently aren't a th like existential threat, in my opinion. Yeah, well, and if you you know, and basically, it, well, I remember thinking that it. I cut you off. Go ahead. Well, everything that we've ever been told is that it is it is it is the algorithm, mm -hmm. and that is the sole, you know, force behind <laughs> this thing. And it, it is as difficult as that is to believe. Um, you've it seems like if you've got if that is the case, then if you've got one person who's sort of screwing that up for all let's plays, then. Mm -hmm. They've got to make a change to the algorithm, but then everyone gets swept up in that sure, change as yeah. opposed to just targeting yeah. that one person. Yeah. So it does kind of make sense when you see uh, certain genres suddenly, yeah. and it may be, you know, and if all of a sudden this the apocalypse thing is rewarding the safest, most, you know, kid-friendly content, it makes sense that, you know, a kid unboxing toys is going to get 100 million views. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's not that simple, obviously, but... It does seem like now, though, to go back to your original point, that there is kind of a, there's a very doom and gloom right now, I feel like, on YouTube. I mean, and, and, and in the sense of what people are watching, too. And I don't know, I, it, it's, I get frustrated with YouTube because they, they actively ignore content that's geared towards adults. They don't promote it, they don't give, and I can't say, like, they exclude it from the algorithm. I wouldn't say anything that dramatic. But they certainly don't give them YouTube Red Shows or movies, or any of the other service that they give to other people, like uh, Logan and Jake Paul, for example. And so, or us. Or, or you guys, but you're, I don't know if it's a... I don't know if it's an age thing, or a family-friendly thing, but either way, they're just... They're such, like, pussies. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just annoying. It's like... It used to be the Wild West. It used what to be do you so want? Crazy. Are you offering? You got connections. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's make it happen. No, I don't. I don't. I want to see more adult content. I agree. Well, what do you? Because th I remember the the very beginning of the apocalypse, and um, and I guess it was I, I can't remember I, the video was it was offensive for some like uh, it was like a it was racist or something. I what, can't the, remember. You mean the PewDiePie video that like no, was no, the not, no, not that, but the very first like when like. The, Some brand the was very like, first oh, thing. it was it, actual we, ISIS. It was an thing. ISIS. It was an ISIS. Video. Which, yeah. let's be honest, pretty bad place to right. So ISIS obviously, video. so this yeah. is this is this, is, this obviously this is not something that any brand wants. Um, but it seems like the reaction to that was to suddenly demonetize a whole host of uh, of videos that, I mean. There, advertisers have been associated with non-family friendly content since the beginning of yeah, advertising. Of course. So I just, I, that never computed for me. It was like, okay, I, I was upset with the advertisers because I was like, okay, mm -hmm. listen, yes, there was an anomaly. Somebody, your, 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 yeah, your commercial like came up before a, a, a video that's awful. But and that doesn't, it's that not you're not actually that associated with that. Exactly. With that. And it's nobody's like watching the ISIS recruitment video and being like, oh my God. Coke. <laughs> Co I'm not buying a Coke anymore. But also, right. it's not something that happens all the time. It's obviously was a mistake. It's and obviously YouTube, you know. Yeah. But we're in a, we're in a super reactionary time right now, where if you don't take a stand for that kind of thing, and it, it, like if one brand says, "Well, we're out of here because of this anomaly." And then every, if, if the next brand doesn't say yeah. we're out of here as then well, then like, something's wrong with them. That's the that's, well, that's, that's the way actually, things work right now. They actually even did when a lot of companies were boycotting, other companies continued spending. And there was a lot of media articles like shaming the companies mm -hmm. who yeah, didn't exactly. suspend. And it's like, yeah. well. Which is, I mean, it's just, it makes absolutely no sense. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this. A couple months ago during the shooting in um, Las Vegas, in Las Vegas, that awful tragedy. CN, I was watching CNN Live, I put on the TV, I wanted updates, and they're rolling to five-minute commercial breaks while it's happening. Exactly. So will you tell me, what, what are the, those brands that are buying Coca-Cola, Dr. Pepper, Toyota, <laughs> but yet you same can't, exact but people. But on YouTube, I you can't talk about those things. On YouTube, if you talk about those things, you get demonetized. It, yeah. it, who, the brands 
are having a crisis of conscience. I don't understand what they're thinking if they're if you're willing to run ads on any news channel, any any news channel at all. Tragedy, awful things, all time. A lot of people say that it's a it's a you know an actual effort to either advertisers to get price reductions or traditional media trying to delegitimize you to I don't know. There's yeah, a lot of that, moving pieces that, that though. whole that whole deal. I mean that 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 hurt the movement towards, you know, uh, I, I think the, the the thing that YouTube hasn't seen yet is it hasn't seen that um, sort of culture defining product, right? Mm. In a way that like, you know, Netflix or Amazon and some of these other, they've created these properties that everyone is talking about in a positive mm. way and adults are talking about them in a positive way mm -hmm. adults are only talking about the negative things that they finally realize their kids have been watching i mean that's that, true that's the way it's yeah that's, that's the true. way it's exploded yeah and so i just think if, if you're if you're desperate to create those things that really define the cultural conversation around entertainment um it's yeah you get i mean i I wish I could say I just wish they would have taken a stand against some of the brands, but they you can't mm -hmm. because That's... the brands are they're, they're holding uh, holding the money. Well, a lot of people said, "Well, th what are they going to do? Not come back?" It's where all the views are. Yeah, I would have loved to have seen that, but they're an advertising company. Let me ask you guys this: You said you wouldn't let your kids watch the Pauls. What do you guys think about the Paul brothers? Well, that should tell you what they think about that. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Uh, I well, I already, already kind I've of only, said I've yeah, only you know. ever watched one video, so that does make it more difficult for mm -hmm. me to answer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I knew, I mean, we knew, we met Logan. Like we met Logan at something years ago. I was like, "There's a this is, he, he was from Vine, right?" Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think that's that's when we met him in New York at some event. Mm. And then we exchanged numbers somehow. And then, you know, I was exchanging texts with him years ago when it was, hey, I got this movie movie that I'm working on. I want you guys to be in it. It's a movie that hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. It may not happen, I guess. I certainly haven't talked to him since any of this. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think... I think my impression, again, never met Jake. My impression was up until this last, having not really watched any of the content except just kind of when something went wrong. Mm -hmm. I think my impression was that Logan's cool. You know, I think I would always say, I would be like, look, I, I, it's, not, it's not my kind of thing. I'm mm -hmm. not into it. But like, I met him one time. He seemed like a cool guy. I mean, he, he, was, de seem, yeah. he was definitely like a little too high energy for my personal taste. <laughs> but then I was like, but then I was like, but Jake, they, I mean, Jake's got some issues, you know. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, I, I, it's sad to say, I just feel like that Logan's kind of falling into the same path. Mm -hmm. Um it's you know there's there's a lot of vloggers there's a there, first of all there's just a lot of people in general in fact most people are all about this it's all about me it's all about my world it's all about my empire mm -hmm. it's just more, some of us are better at hiding it than others mm -hmm. but i think the thing that's that's scary for me is when we get to a place where people can un, just without any shame at all can make everything about them and mm -hmm. their perspective it's almost a selling point and then and then no one is there to call them out on it right who's a, like they can develop just hordes and hordes of fans who just say hold on isn't it, it i don't think it's cool that yeah everything that this dude says is about getting the attention back onto himself yeah, yeah that that's the one video i watched over your shoulder the, 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 which uh, was infamous the, well it was it was in, if after his return. It was, was his. A, com he's only seen the comeback video. Mm. I've only seen the comeback the suicide, video. Suicide uh, prevention. No, one? not no, the, not yeah. a slick the one, dead but rat the, one. After that, when he was in the his backyard. Koi one. <laughs> I think it was There's, just. It was an announcement I'm into video. Deep. I'm into deep. It was an announcement video where he was just giving an update on. He was standing next to the pool talking about. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Every. His how, greatness. How he was back. <laughs> he was he was standing in front of his pool with the guy with with his entourage jumping in and out of the pool and hitting each other. <laughs> right. It you know, 
espousing his greatness. Mm. And I was shocked. Mm. I mean, you keep waiting for I, the punchline, honestly. There is not. I was you, you keep waiting for the punchline, and then you're like, no, this is this is it. This well, is serious. I, I, I heard him best described as he's like the embodiment of somebody that you think is awesome when you're like 12. You're like, that's the coolest guy ever who I want to be. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you're if you're a certain twelve year old, I mean, I have, I have one of those, and I don't think he would say that. Mm -hmm. I know my fourteen year old says that she would never have anything to do with watching any of their videos, mm -hmm. and that's not based on any conversations we've had. I just ask her what mm -hmm. her opinion was. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've heard I of was... middle schools, maybe high schools is a little bit outside the range, but it's like it's the Paulers versus the Low Gang. And they all wear merch like little gang wars. That's crazy. <laughs> it's pretty nuts by, from what I've heard Well, but, there. you know, interestingly, so if you think about hip-hop, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's very analogous to this. Yeah, so I was you, about you go back to the mm -hmm. early days of hip-hop and hip-hop as it exists today, and it's just like this bravado and this mm -hmm. bragging about who sure. you are and yeah. what you have. Right. But, let, let's not, and, but, but let's not say all of hip-hop. No, 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 no. I'm a big, no, I'm a big no, fan. No. But, uh, uh, but th there's... There is a... That is a part... That there is a large swath. Let's say the bling culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, su the bling subculture well, It's interesting of because, okay? okay, so I've got a 13-year-old, and, and, and we try to be pretty liberal about the things that he can enjoy, and mm -hmm. he can make his own choices. Mm -hmm. More than I, more choices than I had. Mm -hmm. And so he's pretty much allowed to listen to any music that he wants to. And so, but the thing is, is I, as I tell him, it's just like, I want you to be able to... Um, tell the difference between Kendrick Lamar and Lil Pump. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I want you sure, to... Yeah. Cause, cause one is like super thoughtful and thinking about yeah. wh wh where is this cultural conversation going, Kendrick? And then you got Lil Pump, which I can't even name a song, but <laughs> it's just like, it's like for the, it's for the club or Gucci for a party or whatever. Party. Gucci gang, Gucci and, gang, Gucci gang. And, I, and, and he was like, yeah, yeah, I listened to that Pretty one. Pretty catchy, right? I listened to that. Yeah, Dad, I listened to Lil Pump when I want to get pumped up before a basketball game. And I listened to Kendrick Lamar when I want to think about something. And I was like, just as long as you have the ability to you decipher know. that. Yeah. But, but because there is that, but I think that what the Paul brothers are doing right now is it's just completely clouding that. Because in hip hop, you can be like, if you if you were to sit down with some of these hip hop artists who are all about me, me, me and their content, and you just had a conversation with them, you, you'd probably be like, dude, that's just my act. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sure. But but I think that the vlogging is blurring the line between what's oh, the act yeah. and what's mm -hmm. the person. Big and I time. think that yeah. the vlog becomes the person. Right. Big time. I yeah. was really, you know. If you even go back six months ago, or even a, a year ago, even further, and watch Logan's vlogs, He's like a normal guy. Yeah, I, like I said, I remember a few years ago meeting him and just thinking like, this guy's high, a little high energy he, from, from from me. But yeah, I mean, like he seemed like, like a genuine uh, dude who was just trying to make it. Yeah, like that that video you guys mentioned, we were goofing on Logan Paul, and at the time, me and Ela, we were like, it's, he's not that bad, you know? Maybe he doesn't deserve it. Like we really thought, like you know, he he exaggerated. Maybe it's not that bad. We gave him like, we thought about not even making the video because we, we felt a little bad making fun of him for that. Fast forward today, and he's stomping around his $8 million mansion, tasting dead rats. Yeah. Well, and to me, this may be, a, you know, to, to, to me... I don't know that that has any indication on... Well, I mean, this may be... A, a, to me, obviously, the Suicide Forest video was crossing so many lines, and yeah. it was just a, the dumbest thing ever. Now, that was a symptom that was of a, how disconnected. But unbelievable. Yeah. It, was, it was just a symptom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just a symptom, and it's just like... You you can it's it's the videos where he's stomping around the around the, the house and bragging about who he is and what he has mm -hmm. and how you should join the gang that are ultimately more problematic in my mind. But that is like all of his videos now. That's what that's Do you know what, what I'm saying? I yeah, can't definitely. believe. Uh, yeah, because I, I, obviously, if you isolate the incident of the suicide forest, it's way worse because it's it take you know it's taking advantage of this person, disrespecting it's that coming person to and his head family. There. Uh, but, but it's a, it, but it is a it is a, a sort of a peak symptom of a of a bigger underlying problem, that, and that's why when everybody gets so upset about the one thing and they're like he did this it's so bad you two better make a stand you two better just kick him off let's sign up let's do a petition petitions people want to do petitions all the time to get people kicked out of I don't want the guy kicked off of a pla the platform I want people to develop the wherewithal to make a decision to not watch it mm. well can't we just expect 
We're, we, our kids are growing up in a culture right now where because that would that would take we, care of we it. we want the organizations in charge to make all the decisions for us. Mm-hmm. We want you Twitter to no ban this person. On the parent. We want you YouTube to ban this person. Why can't we just equip the kids with a mind that makes a decision to just filter themselves? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that's the parents' responsibility. Yeah, it's the parents' yeah. responsibility. Yeah. But like I said, with the, with with Locke, it's like as opposed to saying you can't listen to this. And listen, I'm not trying to say I'm a, I'm a good parent. I'm doing my best, but my intention in doing this whole thing of letting him be exposed to things and then, but learning how to decipher mm-hmm. is in an effort so that he develops a mind that sure, when he right. leaves the house, it's like I, he can make his own decisions about yeah. this stuff. He doesn't need to to block somebody on Twitter because they offend him. <laughs> sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Or, or expect Twitter to ban somebody because they yeah. offend him. Yeah. I mean, you know, I was there's a part of me that's I'm, I'm concerned for him as a as a human you know that is you know he's made he, he he's he's 22 made, he's made these horrible he's decisions they're both very young and now he's 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 just doubling down on just his self-aggrandizement mm-hmm. you know it's like he's doubling down that's true he, and it, yeah. is that is that a trap you know is he falling into a trap that he set for himself mm. You know, and and bringing all of these people that he's influencing along with him. So, I mean, before him, we learn the lesson to not judge a person just based on the content they make because it wasn't. You know, we 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 made the mistake of judging people just based on oh, what the the content they make, in my opinion, is obnoxious, and then you would meet the person. Uh, in real life, be like, wow, this is actually this is a human, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and this and okay, they're they're playing a character that's working, mm-hmm. you know, it's they're 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 gaining traction, you know, they and at a certain point, it's like you can't help yourself, you're, you know, at a certain point, it it goes too far. Mm-hmm. He's certainly gone too far, yeah, and so that's that's the difference here. I still feel for the guy, yeah, that you know, it's like, can somebody just intervene on an interpersonal level? You know, I know someone who ran into him uh, a week ago Mm -hmm. and just uh, not on camera, not in any profession, just like on the street. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, if that was me, what would I have said? Or I just told you, I have his I have his number. It may not be his number anymore. Should I text the guy? (laughs) Interesting. Interesting thought. I would like to talk. Just reach out on a human level. On a human level. I don't know. Right. Yeah, because that's the thing. I don't want to see the downfall of, of Logan or Jake. I, yeah. that, that's I just what I would love to see is just an acknowledgement that um, <laughs> this is not a healthy way to see yourself or the world. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sure. And also because 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 there's just so many kids who are just so captivated by it right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can't and you also can't hide behind. Well, my content's not for kids. I mean, parents should be making the parents should be the ones. Uh, if you're if you're doing content like he's doing, you're going to attract that audience, and it and with that becomes a uh, you know a great responsibility. Mm. Um, so I don't know. I I still I think in the end, um, hopefully, I mean, first of all, the the crazy meteoric success that they're enjoying right now, nobody ever that never lasts. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, eventually, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And so maybe before that ends, where they still got a platform, there'll be some. I mean, the suicide forest thing seemed like the perfect event to bring about that kind of self-realization. I honestly thought I was going to see a meaningful mm-hmm. change from that. And he came back. What I saw was someone trying to make a point that they weren't going to change because everybody wanted them to. Like he was pandering to his audience and coming back like bigger and crazier. That's yeah. what I saw. Right. Yeah. That's, that's well, what we yeah. Said. In the one video I saw, he was bragging about the petition, and then he right. said, "I'm going to sign the petition." Right. You know. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, it's if you're, it's, it could be a coping mechanism for what's what he's the pain what of he's, having all those people actually hate you. Just and yeah, and it's you know, and unfortunately the coping mechanism of doubling down on it, it's going to work. It's working. Yeah. You know, it's making it worse for him and everybody else. Eventually, right. It's an interesting thing. And 
to their credit, this is something we've never seen before. The yeah, yeah, the yeah. popularity of those two guys and what they've done and like they've revolutionized like merch. Oh, it's remarkable. To be honest, <laughs> we are thinking about merch differently since we've seen what they're doing. And every YouTuber As is on. we are. It's Everyone. insane. <laughs> I've heard rumors. These are just rumors. I don't know. But that Logan makes $10 million a month selling merch. Could be possible. Every, I mean, every, every middle schooler apparently is rocking Maverick merch as far as I know. Yeah. I mean, but, yeah, the, the way that he's built a brand that's, that's bigger than himself. Yeah. All that. Absolutely. Stuff, again, it's, yeah. There, there are things to be uh, commended and there are things that can, can, that we can all learn from, but it's just the, when there's not a separation between that character and the real person, mm -hmm. that's yeah. the problem. That, that yeah. that's that's what's, and 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 to give the guy full credit, if I was 22 years old and had that level of success, I don't know that I would have been any better off. Oh, that's gosh. a that's a that's just another a, thing. You were talking about we you got know. We, you got lucky with who we hired. We also got lucky with the fact that we were basically 30, <laughs> right? With kids, we were <laughs> us all, too. you know. I mean, not not that yeah. old. <laughs> <laughs> when all this happened and it was like you know I, man when i was 22 years old if, if as a teenager uh, fame as a teenager that would have been what was i doing at 22 i wasn't doing anything i was playing video games i was worthless to this planet at 22 <laughs> i had no value as a human being at 22. <laughs> like genuinely i'm not being hard on myself but like we we didn't find success on youtube till our late 20s also right yeah i think that makes a big difference so yeah, i mean you have to be kind of forgiving but it's it's can I show you something just yeah. to kind of segue out of this topic and just lighten the mood a little bit? Yes. Okay. It may actually do the opposite. I hope it doesn't. <laughs> uh -oh. But what there's this uh, like Jake. What do you think about this? I wanted to show them the Buy That Merch song by Jake Paul because it's just so fun. And I think you got as musicians, as, as a, you know, triple threats. As the I've best said, song of the year. I think that you guys will appreciate Is this. Is this a new song? No, he made well, it around Christmas time. Yeah, it's a Christmas song. Oh, this is this shit? Okay, hang on. Am I gonna look at where? Where am I gonna point my face to look at this? It's gonna there. be on the TV screen here. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was a uh, Jake Paul "All I Want for Christmas." So him and <laughs> and his brother went on this just completely brutal competition to sell merch because they have the same fans. Mm -hmm. And December's, as you know, the biggest time of the year to sell stuff. And so they both just went balls. They out. both made like ten songs. But they're December. all they're all elaborate ploys to sell merch. And so it came to a head when Jake Paul made this song that is just to this day. I think it's on the soundboard, Dan. Can you grace us? I actively decide on a daily basis Bada. not to watch this type of stuff. <laughs> this one now is you dear have to my heart. To. <laughs> yeah. I, and you're you listen, this is you're my house now. All right, not the uh, whole thing. No, you don't even have to say anything. I just want you to enjoy it. Because I know you're not going to watch this. You're going to laugh. You're going to love this. You're going to go home singing this on the way. <laughs> on the way. Buy that merch. This is the chorus. Buy that merch. 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 Say, all I want for Christmas is that Jake Paul merch. All I want for Christmas is a Jake Paul shirt. All she want for Christmas is a JP. I'm a flirt. All I want for Christmas is a JP sweatshirt. Set fanjoy.co. Best that's Jake Paul. Get it while you can before I sell it. My favorite part's coming up here. Spend a hundred dollars. Free shipping, y'all. Go tell your mama she gotta buy it. That's that's when he he does a really hard sell. Go tell your mama she's gotta buy it all. <laughs> okay, radical theory here, right? Okay, th this is what this makes me think. How right? much do you love this song? You guys <laughs> gotta watch more YouTube. Okay, there's but, good shit out there. Right? <laughs> but think about it for a second, because we can never do that. Even as shameless as we are about getting people to buy our merch, Mythical Dot Store. Um, <laughs> um, there's this great like, stuff. There's this, <laughs> there's this <laughs> built-in governor. Codes? That, uh, I don't no. know. Oh well, you're don't obviously do not that shameless. Codes. <laughs> we don't need coupon codes. Um, there's this built-in governor that. There's a there's a certain amount of shame the shame meter starts going up, right? <laughs> but maybe we're just not being honest with ourselves. Maybe mm. Logan and Jake just rec just represent perfect honesty mm. at this point, and we should just be making songs about how you should buy our merch. If we really want you to buy our merch, mm. I mean, we should there just is rap no filter. It. The filter is gone. That is an interesting theory. 
And maybe this is the maybe this is the future ethic. Maybe this is <laughs> yeah, just so honest. You know how Every when you look, single person's got merch. <laughs> well, you know how when you it. look back at certain I, times, we feel the same way about our merch, <laughs> and, and but like, we choose not to say it because we're. You don't want to proclaim it to the world. Well, it would just be embarrassed. Look, maybe it's not this a good is look. the future morality. I'd rather make less money than be so embarrassed by no. doing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I could, you know, but but what Rhett's saying is that, boy, if I if I if I threw that. Um, self awareness. Yeah, the shame. But through the self awareness out the window, you, well, let me ask you I, this. people would people would. If you made a song like this, how, how do you store. think your how do you think your fans would respond? <laughs> well, I mean, they would <clears throat> buy that merch. They well, they, they would, would they would know that it was a joke. Like at this yeah. point, but what, what if it wasn't? If it wasn't a joke, <laughs> it's I can't even imagine what, what it would look you, like. What well, you think about wasn't. the type of communities that we? So I. I'll brag on our our community for for a little bit. The mythical beast. It's like I think that we have built a very a quality community. Like yeah. we did a thing today uh, that's going to go up uh, in March where we're uh, getting people to sign up for something that mm -hmm. potentially could save people's lives. I don't want to get mm -hmm. into the details because I want to wait for the episode. But like when we got done with the episode, I was like, "A, I think that was a great use of the platform, and mm -hmm. like it makes me feel as good about anything we've ever done." Uh, and B, I really think we're going to get a lot of people to do this because I think we have a, a, an amazing fan base. Mm. Um, and so I think that we've we had a decade of the kind of content that we've created has. And then you get into this loop where you start creating content for the audience, you know, and it's just like I'm doing things, trying to anticipate what they're going to like. And I think if you've got a good community, you th that makes your content better ultimately. Mm. Um, and so I think we've gotten to this place where we can't get away with that because they wouldn't let us get away with it. Mm -hmm. I like. They keep I, I, I'll say we wouldn't let ourselves get away with it, but at this point, I like to think that we've built a community that would that keeps us in line. Well, I'll say to you yeah. guys credit. There's not many channels on YouTube that can build to the size you guys have without participating in drama or mudslinging or anything beyond just pure entertainment, which is what you guys do, and I think which is why you guys are so beloved by us and everybody. And YouTube too is because you guys are just honest to God entertainers and you don't fuck with any of the peripheral stuff on YouTube that like and we're I mean our biggest explosions came from drama <laughs> from one way or the other just frankly speaking right yeah they come for that you guys did it the hard way the honest way but then, and, you, but then you get us to talk uh, some drama to, today so <laughs> kudos to you and that's <laughs> and and well, no, you guys. <laughs> but yeah, that's no, this gonna... is, no, nothing that we said hasn't been said before. <laughs> um, exactly. I bring good, honest people in here, and I squeeze them for the bad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, like, and I, and I think that's kind of where the problem again feeds back into what we were talking about earlier. Kind of just wrap this up, this whole conversation up. You can't really get big on YouTube anymore without giving in to the dark side. Do you agree with that? I don't know. I guess we'll see. I'm waiting to see, like, besides this, like, vloggers invasion. That's the big thing right what's now. What's the next thing? I think this year is going to tell us a lot. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what, what's next. Yeah. I, I have hope. Me mm -hmm. too. I mean, I, I, and, yeah. if, you know, go back to Liza, you talk about her. Yeah. You know, I think she's... She's, she's, a, she's pure and good. Yeah. And you know what? I, I regret that I said... That her growth is organic because I don't want to take away the credit she deserves for being great. Even though I may think that. <laughs> but I don't want – I she deserves the success she has. Yeah, right. And I don't think she would have got to where she was if she was less talented. Right. Anyway, let's, 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 switch, let's do a hard <laughs> – Right turn here. <laughs> Let's get off this now. Give me that chorus one more time, though. Just you. <laughs> Just you. Oh, Bye that. Merch. Oh, okay. But that's really all there is to it. We have it on the soundboard. What? Mm -hmm. Merch. Yeah. <laughs> all I want for Christmas is that Jake Paul merch. <laughs> My the favorite line that I love. It's from a that. good song. It's, it, <laughs> you, you are good. It's gonna be. It's gonna fuck your whole night up. <laughs> I sing that shit. You're gonna be on. You're gonna be on his website before the it's before insane. the morning comes. Yeah, dude. You, next time I see you, you're gonna be rocking that <laughs> Jake Paul merch for sure.
<laughs> Go you gotta tell spend a hundred dollars. You gotta buy it all. Uh, you is... know we love merch. Because <laughs> the moment merch. we came in here, it's like we were yeah, looking we were at looking your merch. Y'all yeah, got good merch. We were talking about your merch before we got here. You guys were like, "How do you? What's going on here? How do you guys tell me about you? What's going on here? Merch, man. I'm telling you, merch is worth flip. It's at my yeah. dudes. This is. You guys want to make some lip balm? <laughs> you guys don't do it. <laughs> Can't rival. Do you Can't rival my lip balm? You guys no. have lip balm. We, That's yeah, right. we sell some weird stuff. We no. sell yeah. lip balm. Is that a big earner for you guys? The lip balm? No. Is that a? What else do you no. have? Like is, is a... it? no, yeah. He, he, don't ask any. You, you have something for the beard numbers. too, right? Yeah, yeah. So we, we have friends. <laughs> How do you line that up? <laughs> well, so, we, so <laughs> I don't have beard. It's a good question. We just have some friends, like mythical Some of my closest friends in North Carolina. Just started a company and they were making like soaps and lip mm. balms and stuff it was working but doing this on the side and there and we were just home for christmas a couple of years ago and he was like what if you you and link sold a lip balm yeah <laughs> i can make a beard actually i was putting i was i oil. was getting him to put on a beard oil that i had because mm. he had just grown his beard he was like i can make this <laughs> i'd be interested in making this so he made a beard oil for me a lip balm for link um, and then we were just like almost as a it, it wasn't even it wasn't a joke but it it's kind was kind of a gag like yeah a gag, and yeah. then it like it's not just really a started, traditional merch item. but it was like legit like mm -hmm. they did all this research they made and we like put a lot of time into the development people started buying it lip balm and now I've got Peanut my lip balm peppermint we've got it we have a pomade we have a cologne now that is proof wow. that you audience is yeah. older yeah you I sell mean, beard accessories for Christ's sake right yeah and so it, it's been. I don't know. It's been it's a fun experiment to yeah. to try these things and like they're like legitimate products. But uh, yeah, buy that. That's how it happens. <laughs> buy that. <laughs> What's the link? Come on, uh, release the inner. Buy that. Buy that. Merch. Merch at mythical dot store. <laughs> there you go. Feels good. <laughs> Does feel good. Mythical dot store. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah. All right. Enjoy let's... Co. We'll you... sell your merch over there if you want us to. We will keep all the money. Yeah. I like... want... What's what's that fun look yeah, like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We get to. Um, you guys are somewhat known for eating and doing gross, awful, miserable things on your show. Right. Mm -hmm. What is the grossest, miserable, most regretful thing, most suffering you've endured during that process? The most suffering is the is the hot peppers, without a doubt. Mm. And, and, you guys yeah. take those like and, and most recently the the one that. We ate for the, uh, we were challenged by um, binging, binging with Babish. Right. Did he do it? He challenged. He, he, he ate a hot pepper of some, some kind. So then we ate a Trinidad Scorpion, which is actually not as hot as the Carolina Reaper we had eaten before. But something happened, man. It was something <laughs> You broke. Yeah, yeah. I, I could, whenever we eat stuff, we're also thinking of how are we, how can we be entertaining? You know, it's like, so <laughs> right. eat the hot pepper and it's like, I'm dying, but I have to make this funny. Yeah. Oh if you watch that video, <laughs> you just give up. Yeah. But that's it, almost the most entertaining. It, it curled up, he curled up on the couch. I, could, I had nothing. I had no <laughs> oh, jokes. No. I had nothing. <laughs> that's awful. How did you handle it? He handled it great. What was the recovery? Like? I felt pretty good. I was, hurt, I was hurting pretty bad, but I, I could tell that something bloomed in his stomach like mm -hmm. i you know each pepper's different and you don't know what you're gonna get That's you don't know true. what's already in there in your stomach and i knew he would never i mean so we i mean it was, it was it was live i mean there's no there's no cutting in the middle of this thing so wait you guys did a live well i mean once we started we, we said all right for 10 minutes we're not going to Eat or drink, drink anything. Right, I th yeah. We had different stipulations for the, for the Carolina Reaper. For ten minutes, we didn't eat or drink anything. We just sat there and took it. That was the that's what we decided. That was how you wanted the Something. show format to be, right? So I knew when he went. I looked back there and he was in the fetal position on the couch. How long? In the back. That of was the after the ten minutes. <laughs> no, that was during that the ten was, minutes. You didn't make it. And then we went through Good Mythical More. So that's another. That's another, another ten, ten minutes. Another I ten minutes in the same position. So I would, yeah, it might have hit you in Good Mythical More. I can't. I I know all through Good Mythical More. I was just up there, talking, and yeah. because we were, I was just drooling. I was aching. And well, we drool. turned it into. I mean, you talk about self promotion. We turned it into. It was the release of Buddy System Season 2, mm -hmm. the trailer. Mm -hmm. oh. So we were going to show that in Good Mythical More as we recovered. We didn't mm. know how bad it was going to be. Mm. And so, you know, we thought we'd get more clickage. <laughs> you know, get playing that, playing that game. Uh, I don't think so. 
Oh no. <laughs> no, it, it, I'm, I don't. I don't know. It, it, somewhat, but it wasn't nearly as entertaining but as the when fact we made the Carolina was, Reaper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. People didn't care as much, and you know, the second time around. What's but that? that was the, that was the most. I mean, so we did it twice. We're not doing it again. I mean, we were on the. We've both, done. We, on, we both vomited it up later. We were that on night, the phone that night at home, uh, a couple hours later, mm-hmm. and Rhett, I was like, man, I just feel. I mean, I was in. It, well, it's almost like okay. a bad trip. I, I, I'll, I'll I, take I, you through it. So, so you started to feel better, like. 15 minutes after Good Mythical More was done shooting, you like got up, you you had eaten a bunch of bananas, and then you ate more bananas. That's a good way to kind of like line mm-hmm. your stomach if you're going to do this type of thing. And then you started to feel better, but I went back into like our dressing room area, and I laid down on the floor. And I, if I changed position at all, I could I could feel my the the my stomach content oh move just enough to expose a different part of my stomach oh. to the pepper oh, wow shit. I, I just imagine you know i had a visual image of right. like i had like a map of the inside of my stomach mm-hmm. and if i it's like if i moved a little bit i could tell something new was burning mm-hmm. and so i sat there um eating ice cream trying to be motionless for the next 20 minutes Jeez. and then wow. I, I finally was able to get up and i went into our office and you were we had a meeting and you were sitting in there and you were still in a decent amount of pain. I was in a decent amount of pain. Uh, fast forward a couple hours. We go home. I text Rut, and he's like, I'm like, how do you feel? Because I feel absolutely horrible. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm, it just comes in waves. Like, your stomach will churn. It'll just turn over. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, it's just like, whoosh, like if a fire's almost out, and then somebody stokes it. Mm. And he said, I, I threw up, and I feel better. Mm. I was like, I got to do it. So I went upstairs and tried to make myself throw up. Couldn't Did it burn it. coming out? Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. And you couldn't puke? I went back downstairs. What's he doing out there? He's. I thought he might have been laughing at us. He is. He is. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. We, got, <laughs> yeah. we, have, a, we yeah. have a peanut gallery. Because his, it's through the wall. He, He's I talking hear about laughs Dan, by the way. Dan's laughing out there. Yeah. But it's not tied to anything we say that's Yes, fun. it is. That's why I'm laughing is. right now. I think there was something you said. You're, you're so much funnier than you know. Isn't that a beautiful right. quality? You're, 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 you're funny, funny and like, you're, you're just... I'm like, why is he watching something else? <laughs> <laughs> We're doing this in here, Dan. You said something that made like, me... Like, I literally you. thought that. I'm like, I, I, I you're funny. I tilted my nose. <laughs> yeah, I tilted yeah. my nose. <laughs> you said something about... Uh... Why is he watching something else? Why that's that's so funny. Anyway, were you able to puke? <laughs> it took... I went back downstairs, gave up. And then I, I was like, I have to do this. Went back upstairs. If you can't make yourself throw up, but you have to, ooh, it's not a that good is bad. To be in. It's, yeah. Because it's everything in, in me knew how bad it was going to be. Oh, and it was horrible coming oh my back God. out. Yeah, I mean, worse than going Because now it's going through your nose exactly. oh. you get some, nose. too. And it's ooh. so bad. Don't yeah. do it. We're not I mean, doing we it. Again. It sounds way worse so you than we ever only did imagined. it again for charity. It was like yeah. an Alzheimer's. We're, we're, we're done. We're done um, with hot peppers. Wow. Because you research guys, charity, but I saw you guys do the ghost pepper one, and you really was that the one where you're like, okay, I'm in my zen mode. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the Carolina Reaper. Was that that was, was that real? Uh, yeah. I mean, having the, the camera Carolina on, the, yeah. having the yeah. camera on, the hottest pepper you, in the you, world. You come up with things that you're gonna do, but like hitting myself like self-flagellation that was legitimately <laughs> coping <helpful. mechanism>. yeah. <laughs> but after the camera was turned off that time when you guys were like hey we're all good this is the show and we're fine was it i was i was death? fine link you wasn't. were fine i was not 11 uh, hours later he was in the fetal position on the couch in our oh office. my god yeah. was, we worked late that night and wow. we had to shoot another video and <laughs> you guys are, uh, I and was laying on this, the floor. You have this huge <laughs> crew. Thing. It's got to be hard to be like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna clock out early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we had to we had to keep doing stuff. The, the other, other gross day, stuff yeah. we eat is I mean it's it all runs together at this point. I mean, it's just a whole <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. A whole nightmare. <laughs> yeah, they keep finding new things though. <laughs> we had lamb tongue this morning. Wow. People, that's the thing, like, when we did the spin the bottle gag, and by the way, everybody, there's videos on GMM, Good Mythical Morning, to go please watch. When we, well, Great you, support from your audience, by the way. Get, yeah. Cool. Oh, what do you call great. them? The, we call them the Fupa Troopers. We have all kinds of we names. We don't have a name. Eli Kleiners? 
Ela Kleiner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a direct right. reaction to Jake, Jake Paul because he we made a little laugh because he calls his fans the Jake, Jake Paul. Right. I'm like, you can't just put an E R at the end of your name. <laughs> <laughs> but he did. He did. It. And so what Ela Kleiner. <laughs> anyway, what the fuck was I talking about? Pimp Nation. Pimp, what up, Pimp Nation? Dude, watch out! <laughs> watch you on our channel. That's all. Watch, you were yeah, yeah. Watch us. Oh, about the gross food. You got all the gross. You got the gross food, but yeah. I was thinking like somebody somewhere because it was like uh, pork liver shit or something tongue. People, somebody somewhere oh, yeah. eats that and enjoys it. <laughs> everything that we eat, including yeah, but the... they don't prepare it the way that no. including our the, crew the pie. No. They stuff? don't smear it on a mannequin's face. The, no. the insect stuff is, and they know just, the uh, fact that you don't know what it is when you go in for the bite. <laughs> it's so yeah. makes it worse. <laughs> you could be ground beef, and I would be like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We've eaten a lot of great stuff blindfolded, and it, it makes everything worse. You think right. you think it would heighten the sense of taste in a way that you're would just help you enjoy it? Your garden, but for us, I, we just don't. It, yeah, so we're really, we're not the set up thing. correctly. I want to ask yeah. more about the the hot peppers though, because you guys have done something that not many people have done. Not many people have gone that far. You said it stings puking. Tell me, I want all the details, boy. <laughs> I want. I'm, I'm curious. You puked. It burned your throat. You go to the bathroom afterwards. Like how long after are you dealing with the burn? Well, that, you're talking about butthole burn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, well, so that. that one, all the holes. <laughs> that one, because I puked it up. It, I didn't have no the, after the, the exit. Yeah. Uh. But the ghost pepper and the Carolina Reaper. You know, I don't know. You learn like how long it takes food to go through your body. It's yeah, like a real long? scientific experiment. I Is think it's it like twelve same, hours or something. Same day. Uh, no, it was the next day. <laughs> oh, oh and, you know, and then we, we learned that again because we, we did, uh, yeah. we were in New York uh, last year and... The hot, you know, the Hot Ones channel? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, big fan. Hot so Ones we, wasn't in season, but we were... Uh, the oh, yeah, first I saw feast, you guys did the, the spicy Thai food. The, hot, the hottest Loved curry. It. Right, curry, yeah. yeah we and and that. when we, so they were like, we want you guys to eat the hottest curry in the world and we had to do Fallon the next day. Oh, and so I was Ooh. like, "Listen, I don't want to ruin because I'm already going to be nervous about being on Fallon, and, yeah. I, and, and it already makes me have diarrhea anyway. <laughs> right. It's just like I don't right. want to have something added to that." And so, and then we got there, and the whole the whole point of the game was like, first of all, the guy making the curry, the hottest curry in the world, had a gas mask on. Oh That's encouraging. Yeah, and he wasn't <laughs> being filmed. No, it, yeah, it wasn't like for it the wasn't camera. For sure. The guy wears a gas mask when he makes. Did they film him though? I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember. They should have cut it. to that. They really should have cut. I think to they that. did cut to it. Okay, but good. so you had to have a bite of this stuff. First, they were the at first the creative pitch number one was we were just going to sit down and eat the whole thing. <sighs> And then we were like, well, no, 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 we can't do that. <laughs> yeah. So let's play a game where if we get something wrong, we eat a bite of this stuff. That's right. the only way we can manage it. Right. And uh, I missed two questions out of ten, I think. I had, had to take two bites. You had to take four? Yeah. <laughs> All I know is that there's a lot of melancholy. Two, <laughs> two bites. I still had like, oh, our wives were with us that trip. And we were, uh, we were out in a restaurant. And in the middle let's of say the, f let's say five hours later. I don't think it was twelve. It was Yeah, it was it happened it may have been the next day. <laughs> I don't know. We were at a restaurant and in the middle of just sitting at this nice meal, I was like, Well, he was gone. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> he, and I I also had to go. He so then I went to the bathroom. When I came back, Rhett was still gone. <laughs> and I was like, Where's Rhett? And then like I the waiter takes away the the plates that we had eaten off of and we we're like ordering desserts like red's still not back <laughs> oh, no. and then finally like the dessert shows up and then all of a sudden i see i just see red it's like a slow death walk oh no yeah. it's just like coming back to the table with this like oh, pale pale face oh man he sits down at the table and he leans over to me and he's like you're not gonna have a good night because <laughs> he because it hadn't hit me yet did he like, predict correctly yes yeah. it's like t putting a roman candle up your rectum <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but it's not firing out it's you know the feeling uh, i mean I, I, I of the roma candle yes yeah. <laughs> you know the valentine's feeling. days of yesterday so yeah have you guys you know ever... makes that noise <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh all too God. familiar I trigger warning uh. <laughs> um, have you guys ever this is something i've done when after preparing a spicy meal, and I did it with like habanero, 
I like how you say that. Habanero. <laughs> it's not right, but Habanero. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you say it? Habanero. I think he's Habanero. right. Habanero. I think he's saying it. The Habanero. Way that you know what, though? I shouldn't say it that way. Because I, it's like I'm speaking English. I can't all of a sudden break into like a <laughs> flare. Like, anyway, whatever. Right. <laughs> Marijuana. Yeah. We were <laughs> the M word. It's a whole new thing. Yeah. There, anyway, <laughs> my point is, there's like so many tangents. To yeah. Grab on here. I've once touched my genitals after yeah. preparing a spicy Stop right meal. There. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Has that ever happened to you guys after an extremely spicy moment? Mm -hmm. And has that transferred to the sensitive skin on your penis? Yeah, I, I've been very careful <laughs> about that. I, you I, knew I, going maybe in. as a kid, I accidentally mm -hmm. did that, like after like touching a jalapeno or something. Mm -hmm. But um, no, not not as an adult. Because that could be because touching the eyes is bad as oh, well. Yeah, yeah. yeah we've done that. Yeah. Yeah. You just basically you can't touch you can't touch yourself well, it's, it's, no matter how it, much you enjoy it. The problem <laughs> that I had was that it's not intuitive because the eyes is like oh it's an open hole, but right. the penis skin, my friends and everybody listening at home, is much more sensitive than you think. Yeah, right. Because if you just have a little schmutz on your hand, and you get yourself an itch, or or dare I say something more intimate and worse than that, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you are gonna <laughs> feel it. Yes, God's wrath. He's yeah. going to say, no, I'm, don't touch yourself there. Thankfully, right. I've avoided that. And then mm -hmm. that's communicable. That is, right? <laughs> right. 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 Yeah, that, that oil, that pepper oil. I don't know how many people it can transfer How many to, times? But, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. Well, guys, we're, we're closing on two hours here. Are we? This has been a, a over yeah. two hours. glorious two hours. You guys are the. I'm. I'm still a little stressed. We have a lot question. A lot of questions. I didn't we even, didn't get, even close, get to. Yeah. <laughs> but I, so you guys did write down with questions. Yeah, yeah, we prepped. Did it yeah. seem like I prepped? No. Well, we I, do actually, it you know actually what? more like in case that you, that there's you no back. conversation. They're I guess. backup questions. Yeah. We know yeah. about those. But yeah. you guys are. Such a joy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't barely need to look at my notes. <laughs> Those are the best episodes. But well, there is one thing that yeah. we ask all of our guests at mm -hmm. the end of the show. Some people have something to share. Some don't. Don't feel bad either way. We always ask our guests, do you have, and this is, I feel so stupid asking it all the time because <laughs> it's like so out of character. But I'm going to ask it anyway because our fans will kill us if I don't. Do you have any ghost stories, UFO experiences, or paranormal experiences? <laughs> I, just to preface, I don't have any. Yeah. We do have one. I knew you guys I would knew have you one. would. Uh, and this <laughs> just is, one? I know. Uh, well, we, the most famous one is um, we brought a ghost hunter onto the show. Oh, yeah. And he used, you know how they can use that. the radio to, yeah. Yeah. the ghost, like to talk through the radio? You know, we, yeah. a small aside, we went ghost hunting with post yeah with post and mike and alex were yeah. there right yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> we heard about this. did you yeah. hear about you it went to like hell's, hell's gate or something whatever it is what i didn't did find it that spooky and there was some friction hell's, hole. Uh, hell's <laughs> asshole or something yeah. Hell's asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and the first time mike and alex went they made a video that they they pranked they pranked mike or they pranked alex i can't remember who got pranked but basically uh like Alex like scratched mm. himself mm. preemptively mm. and then he went into the tunnel and then he acts it's a, it's a 10 feet tall episode and then he acts like he he got scratched and he shows it and the first time I watched it like the very like for two seconds I, I bought it I was like <laughs> no way yeah and I was like oh no he, did, he set it up it's like a yeah. magic trick but why do we have the ghost hunter on GMM what, yeah. did, the, did the ghost come after or did the ghost come before the, no the ghost he, the ghost appeared that day so I what don't know happened? why we had him on. I thought was something there a, happened. Was there an incident? <laughs> well, I don't. Maybe we I did. Don't remember why? Maybe we did have an, is, uh, an incident where the light would go off occasionally, and then we brought him on to the show to tell us what was happening. Mm -hmm. And he went. He did his radio thing, and he was like, "You know the radio thing? Yeah. They like, they, mm -hmm. they they brought it. Yeah, when yeah. We went. Well, well, and specifically what they do. So they have the thing that like scans for frequencies, but then they have yeah. just a legitimate radio, and you you run through the stations of an FM radio. Mm, like a real station. Yeah, yeah. And the pieces, I mean, this is BS, obviously. But <laughs> they, they they run through. And then it, it'll, <laughs> it'll say different things from just words. And so there was, he stopped on one station. He was like, Nartu. And then he goes to the next one. It's like, 40. 
And Fody. So, and so he was Fody. like, Fody. And like so we e were like, Fody. You guys yeah. are hip-hop fans. Yeah, yeah. Nartu Fody. Yeah. Right. So he was like, that's the name of the ghost. And so Nartu Fody has like haunted GMM for a few years now. So that's the ghost story? Yeah. You guys, are, you guys have a uh, very deep-cut hip-hop rapping ghost. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Fody. Nartu and Fody. I think he yeah. followed us from the old studio to the new studio. He did. He did. Uh -oh. he definitely so did. when you have a light flickers or something a little strange, yeah, the, you, the, you pour the one out for Fody. The mythical beast will point it out like they can see uh, they can see his aura interesting uh in in certain videos but i think the guy huh. i think the guy who came on our show he had a sexual encounter with a ghost didn't he what? he was he was raped by a ghost <laughs> what now that's a ghost story oh, i'd like wow. to hear that's what he said <laughs> yeah. he was raped by a ghost well that's what he said i have never i wasn't there it can happen man. did he give you the that? story I blocked it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I asked him. I, I, I pounced on that one. Uh, and he was tight-lipped. He would not He would not give details. He's a survivor. I think he sensed our... <laughs> God. He, he, he's, he sensed... He, he wouldn't talk about it. He, he sensed our All disposition right? about ghost stories in general. Yeah, he... And... Uh, he was like, I'm not going to give these guys the rape story. <laughs> you know, not. Yeah, we, it's not that we were making fun of him. We were just making fun of his worldview. You, were you guys, dead. but generally speaking, are, you guys aren't believers. No, but I, um, <laughs> I, I remain open to the possibility. I'm open. I'm, I'm open, open to I'm the willing. possibility. Because I, 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 I actually like to open... Like to keep an open mind in situations like that because I end up having more fun. Mm -hmm. So if, like, if I was going on a ghost hunt, I wouldn't be... The skeptic. I was such an asshole. You know, when we went. That's why you're not invited. They go every week. <laughs> yeah, no, no I, I, I believe it. Well, well for, it. for me, it's different. For me, it's I. I'm not a. I'm not a ghost believer. Mm -hmm. In mentally, mm -hmm. but when I have to take, and it's late at night, I have to take my trash out and put it in the trash can. Right. I run back in the house. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't know. I do. I and, just that, do. in that moment, you believe. Yeah. yeah, so I think that's that's that says a lot. That's I mean, a... if I were there, I would have been freaking out. Right. But in the comfort of my own studio, like, um, I was just like, as long as we come up with a, an entertaining name for this ghost, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. right. right. But I don't want to be caught alone with Nartu. <laughs> Nartu 40? Nartu in your pants, 40. 40. Well... Fody. Fody. That was beautiful. Fody. <laughs> Fody. Can you say Fody like E Fody? E Fody. 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 Like fo uh, How do you say it? Fo? Like fo? Like the food? Po? Fody. <laughs> All right. Let's something happens. <laughs> she's, she's like, something happens on the fo. <laughs> yeah. You've got to be it's from the streets easy. like us to yeah, get right. the uh, inflection yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Guys, thank you so much for. I honestly. I love you guys. <laughs> Thank you for taking your time out of your busy schedule and yeah. eating to come here. I'm honored. I'm thrilled. Yeah, this was fun. Have us back. Oh, please. <laughs> come, on, yeah. come on. Let's do it again. Doors open, please. <laughs> well, that's it. That's all we got. That's the show, guys. Thanks Check for watching. Good Mythical Morning. Go to Good Mythical Morning. Go to Good Mythical More. Go mm -hmm. to Mythical. Dot store. Mythical dot store. Dot store. That's, that's an interesting. Domain. <laughs> dot yeah. store. When did that happen? Uh, we, we made it happen. <laughs> no, I, uh, we, some of those domains opened up recently. I like that. That's a We're good like domain. Yeah. Mythical dot store. Tell them, tell them we sent you. <laughs> What does that mean? You're right there. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't make sense. It's been a long day. I feel like today we had a day like you guys have every day. Because yeah. we woke up, finished a video, posted it, and immediately prepped for this. You guys have that every day. I am so exhausted. I don't know how you do it. And you've got families. Oh, yeah. Jesus. It won't last long. <laughs> <laughs> the end is near. Well, I hope not. I hope not. Um, guys, God bless you. Thanks for watching. We will see you next Friday with Shane Dawson will be here. So uh, yeah. please tune in for that. Until then, have a great weekend and uh, be good. Just be Never good. Never said that before. <laughs> <laughs> Bye guys, thanks for watching. Bye. I'm waving now. <laughs>